What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Italian Stallion, here for another episode of Rebels with a Cause. And do we have a show for you guys tonight? Big one, NCAA tournament. Have you filled your bracket out? Well, guess what? If you haven't, we're going to fill it out tonight together. I'm going to enter in a blank sheet for us that will be known as the Rebels with a Cause bracket. And when we win, because we're going to win it together, we'll be at the Final Four next year because that's one of the ticket prizes. So hopefully we can win it as a group. And uh, that'd be pretty cool. Rebels with a cause entering a bracket and so forth. So that's what the name of it's going to be. But uh, a lot to get to tonight. We're going to talk a little West Spring Sports. Congrats to the baseball team. We'll talk to them. They got a nice big win over Sequoia 9-7 tonight. Talk a little soccer, talk some West Academics. They announced the valedictorian and co-salutorian. So these guys and gals have such uh, high GPAs, uh, I couldn't even think about being in that stratosphere. That's why I'm doing this. So while they're going to be changing the world, being true rebels with a cause. Um, but uh, and lo and behold, obviously, we'll do the uh, uh, wrap up the basketball. Alcoa and Fulton going back to back, following our football guys as leads. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just have the sense that maybe UConn might be on a mission to continue this back to back trend we've seen with not only the Rebels football, but the Chiefs in the NFL. So it's uh, it's, it's going to be pretty cool to see uh, uh, how this uh, how this plays out this tournament. But. Uh, before I get started, I just want to just say that uh, the views and opinions of this program are not affiliated with those of any other organization or West High School. I also want to give a shout out to a couple of our sponsors, Alex Thatcher, Rebel with a Cause. Go check out Knoxville Coffee Company there in the heart of Marble City, Sutherland Avenue. Definitely give his brew a, a chance. It'll definitely uh, uh, blow your mind and get you going in the mornings if you get my drift. And uh, give him and his dad and uh, all those uh, hardworking people over there at Knoxville Coffee Company some love and your business. And also my gal, uh, Kim uh, King's Chamber off of Washington Pike. She always takes care of me, does my hair and my beard. She's also going to be offering facials as well as massages, waxes. And uh, when it's up and running, she'll have that manicure and pedicure. So definitely uh, uh, I'll keep you updated as that gets more and more going. But going to have a lovely, lovely place over there. And uh, shout out to uh, Kim Castle who made our uh, Rebels with a Cause shirts. But that being said, let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. Before I get going, though, I need to bring on my co-host, my brother. He's got a birthday coming up as well, so we need to show him some love and maybe roast him come next week after the fact. But it's his weekend coming up, so hopefully we can show him some love and attention. But, uh, you know, he is the 2003 Mr. West, the voice of the Rebels for 18-plus years, and uh, just is the man with a mic in his hand, even helping out other schools when they want his services. That's what he's there for. He's there to entertain with a lot of knowledge and always with a lot of love. Let's bring him on. The one, the only, two pair Tate, Brian Tate, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always got to give love, man. Always got to give love. So and, and appreciate uh, Austin East for having me yesterday. Um, they had some technical difficulties with their sound system, but uh, I still appreciate them at even asking. You know when they're asking the West guy to announce baseball? You know, so I thought that was pretty cool, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Can I give them a shout out for a second, man? I, I, you know, we met yesterday just to kind of talk about the show for a moment. And mm -hmm. you had to get there and, and do the announcing. But um, what was so cool was somebody told me one of their uh, people affiliated with the school. That was their first home baseball game in seven years years they hadn't had a program so shout out to austin east and those kids and i know that it's going to be a, a hard upward climb they're not really seeing the results yet and and you know those scores aren't looking too hot but my advice to those kids is you all are going to be the foundation for something and it might not show up this season but it's going to show up in seasons to come so shout out to those young men and the coaches and the parents and anybody affiliated including yourself to pair to uh, to rise them up and uh, hopefully they can get to where they want to get to as a as a new program that seems to be just starting over and uh, very sad that 7 years without baseball there at Austin East honestly yeah so. that's wild to even think you know it's really it really is wild to think that that they haven't had a, a program you know what i mean and 
I, I give those kids a lot of uh, props for what they're doing, and they they play hard. You know, get a nice facility over there too. From what I saw, beautiful field right there on beautiful campus. field. Like the field is great. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm glad they even had a lot of fans out yesterday, like for a baseball game, the first game. You know, shout out to my man Pup Bishop selling all the good wings out there too. So. You know what I mean? They're 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 gonna be they're gonna be strong, man. They're gonna be strong. So we got a lot to talk about. Um, we I'm do. Talk about. We, got, we got an action packed <laughs> show. I know George Diaz called me, wanted to uh, definitely bring his picks on, and that's my brother down in Miami. Which uh, he he don't know much about West. He only knows what I tell him. But it's awesome that we have a person supporting us. Uh, from uh, from afar, you know, that has his yeah. show with uh, Devin and uh, Larry that covered the Miami Hurricanes and you talk uh, that airs on YouTube on Friday and Monday nights, respectively, throughout football season and a little off the season. So always want to give a shout out to my guy, George Diaz. Um, two pair. Uh, I just want to give a couple of uh, scores for the spring sports because, you know, they're ramping up um, yeah. our soccer team. Uh, played in that Smoky Mountain Classic. Um, they actually split uh, the games. They lost to Paige, so Paige got a little bit of revenge uh, there uh, from football, even though we got the trophy. They played that preseason soccer and ended up losing 1-0 uh, to zero to Paige. Um, and then uh, played station camp the next day in soccer and tied station camp two to two. The player of the game was Elder Cruz. But what was so fascinating about that game is that somebody for West must have gotten a red card and disqualified from the game. And West had to play with 10 men and somehow from a two nothing deficit came back to tie the game two to two from station camp from Memphis. So that was a really, uh, uh, it, it might as well have been a win. Uh, would have been nice to see how they would have done with all 11 guys instead of playing with 10 men. But to come back from two nothing and tie should give them some momentum as they get started against Halls uh, on Monday. And like I said, I hope to see them play Fulton next Tuesday night and uh, be able to give a little bit more about what I saw from the team uh, on next Wednesday's show. Uh, going to baseball real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night, the West Rebels got a big victory. Sorry, TJ. They beat the defending state champs, Union County, 5-2. to two. So, Wes, sorry, TJ. West did beat the defending Clap state champs. Clap it up! Clap it up! <laughs> yeah. How you yeah. like it? How you like it? Look, it was how a you huge, like it? huge how you victory. Like it? Yeah, how huge you like victory. it? How um, do you like it? How you like it? That's what the, see, that's what that's what the older guys did with Red Weber was low time ago. That's what they say. They say after a win, how you like it? How you like how you you, you how you like it? You like it you that wide it. or that wide? I don't know which way you like it, but but it's a W, it's a dang of W. Anytime you can beat a defending state champ, you got to have some talent on that team. Uh, shout out to the player of the game, Mason Dugan, uh, or Duggan rather, two of three, hit the clutch go-ahead RBI double, also had a walk in that 5-2 victory for Union County. West followed it up with another game tonight against Sequoia, ended up winning 9-7. to And uh, the player of the game was senior catcher Connor Glick. He went 2-3 of three with two RBIs and a walk. So shout out to the West baseball team getting there with a two-game winning streak. I hope to catch a game of theirs um, in the next couple of weeks, uh, whenever they've got a home game and so forth. But shout out to those guys. And to not also just keep it uh, um, just about sports, I want to give a shout out to the West Academians. It was announced today, uh, or actually yesterday, but they took their picture today. Valedictorian is gonna is is uh, Amelia Bankston. She's also the setter for Volleyball Lady Rebels. So a Volleyball Lady Rebel is the Valedictorian for the class of 2024 at West. Oh. And the co-salutorians are Charlie Burke and Jocelyn Hunter. So shout out to all three of them, honestly. So very, very happy for those uh, the, the, those two girls and, and that young man. Um, they're going to do some great things when they get to uh, college next year, I'm sure. So and uh, always want to just uh, uh, let it be known that it is Rebels with a Cause and that the clock doesn't stop when it hits zero. Remember that the cause don't stop when the clock hits zero. 
and these kids are going to show it as they move on to whatever they uh, they get into, making a difference in the world, being true rebels with a cause. That shirt that you wear in two pairs says it all, man. Honestly, so yeah. That's that. Shout out to Kim Castle for that. So, um, two pair, can you tell us real quick? Because I know that we got some people here ready to talk about some March Madness, but we wanted to wrap up uh, uh, little brothers from other schools that just showed out for three straight days of just yeah. unbelievable high school basketball. Take it away, man. Yeah, man. Um, you know, uh, of course, one of the teams that didn't win it, I, I thought they, they played tremendous. It, it was just, you know, Douglas was an undefeated team, you know. Um, they were on a mission. I didn't realize they lost to Alcoa last year. So they had won 30-something games undefeated going into that tournament, and that's who Austin East drew in the first round of the state championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a tough draw for Austin East. Um, but, you know, if Austin East would have won, they would have saw Alcoa again. And that's tough to play that team that many times. So uh, I will say the Cherry, the Cherry kids, uh, AAU is going to be really big for them and uh, vital because they're playing on a, a tough circuit, you know, on that Under Armour circuit. They're going to be seeing a lot of talent on that circuit with B Mays Elite. Uh, shout out to Scrap and shout out to B Mays for putting down one of the best basketball factory programs in the state. When you look at the amount of talent, that is at other schools, like you're looking at a blue cane who's down at Georgia playing well, came from the B Mays Elite. You're looking at Tyler Lee of Fulton, who is a Mr. Basketball, you know what I'm saying, is around that elite circuit. Um, uh, Shane Cherry started out with uh, each one teach one growing up. You know, coming up through the ranks. Then you look at the twins, the Kimber twins, who also went back to back um, in state, and they just looked really great against Ridgeway. I oh, mean, they, they played a phenomenal. Like the Kimber twins played a phenomenal game. I also want to point out Dexter Lewis, um, who's <laughs> been with that program forever, who's a, a baller. You know what I mean? Um, and they got a freshman that is going to be. <laughs> a problem <clears throat> they got a freshman that's going to be a problem for years um with that program and you know the kimber twins and tyler lee they've won it every single level yes from middle school to now high school where they go back to back and Javin carter just showed why he's one of the best players two pair you can't tell me that kid can't play at Tennessee, man. I mean, oh Penn State God. is getting a, like a pogo stick, a guy that he makes shots, man, that are just like, you're not supposed to hit that shot. And he makes it with ease. Runners, floaters, they just, they hit nothing but net. They don't even touch the rim. It's like he wills it in every time he shoots. And the only thing that stopped him against Douglas in that game was cramps for like three or four minutes and they worked him on the sidelines and he got, he got out there. And let me tell you this, man, I want to give a shout out to, you know, Jody, Jody's the man around here, Jody Wright and so oh, forth, the coach of Jody, Jody Wright. Yep. Yeah. Jody Wright. Jody Wright. Yeah. No, that's definitely it. I mean, he has put, he, he had a little bit of a, of a lull there, not winning state championships, but this group that came in with him, he got them. I mean, to only lose two games this year is incredible. And, and then to Alcoa's credit, Coach Collins, with what they lost on last year's team, of course, they did have Javin Carter. They had the Eli's, you know, and now they've got a freshman terror in Jameer Dean, who just, I mean, where Javin leaves, Jameer Dean is going to be just a terror, the next great Alcoa player that's going to lead them to yeah. try for a three-peat next year. But credit to Coach Ryan Collins of Alcoa. Yeah. I thought that I watched him play against us, the adjustments he made, the adjustments he made in every game just showed me what a great coach he is. And, you know, he even said – at halftime, while they were up by 18, he told the reporter, this game is not over. They're going to make a run. And I've already told my guys they're going to make a run. And they got it down to four points, man, at one point. But Alcoa just made the right moves to yeah, hold on to win. And I, 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 I don't know anybody on Douglas, but 
what a heartbreak. It's like Paige. You go through, run through your schedule, don't even get a blemish on your record, and you lose to the same team for the second straight year in um, in, in the state championship. It's just it, it's heartbreaking for those kids. But shout out to Alcoa going back to back in basketball and also winning it in football for the eighth straight time now and so forth. So the, the, whoever plays on both teams got a lot of rings, man. Those Eli boys got a lot of rings is what I'm just going to say <laughs> for basketball and football. So but uh, but shout out to those guys. And uh, hopefully that will inspire our boys basketball team to finish their story next year with all they've got coming back and the work that they need to do that we've been pushing them to do for uh, yeah. from here I, until I, October. So when I, it starts. I, I, we're, we're pushing we're pushing these guys to the point of if it don't happen this year, it may not ever happen. No. In no. In, 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 in in this short time span of if your junior year this was the time to kind of to get it mm -hmm. the only teams that were that played better than you were marvel yeah and they got it handed to them by cookville in that first round cookville ran them off the court you yeah. know, I mean, they did. Maryville probably had the worst showing of the four area teams because Austin East just went into a buzzsaw against who they were going up against. But I thought Maryville for sure should have beaten Cookville. Cookville. I thought. Cookville. Cookville. That, that's what I'm saying about this, this year in West Basketball is kind of disappointing. We should have been up there with those two other teams. It should have been Alcoa, Austin East, or sorry, Alcoa, Fulton, and West winning 2A, 3A, and 4A. That's how it should have been this year. You competed with those teams. You beat those teams, and you didn't make it when it counted. That's inexcusable. I'm sorry to be that way, but I just tell I, I love this school. I love this team. I know what this team is capable of, but you didn't bring it in the biggest stage. And furthermore, did you hear the news that – uh, the one guy that actually beat you with his putback will not be at Bearden High School next year. His family, Brody Smith, who I'm talking about, is moving to Maryville, and Brody Smith is transferring from Bearden High School and is now enrolled in Maryville to play football and basketball. Mm. So Maryville just got Bearden's best offensive lineman and big man to join them. That wow. game should be interesting when Maryville and Bearden play in the fall. Breaking news. Breaking news. That is that is on funny. this show, baby. On this show. Five star preps had the story. Shout out to Jesse Smithy, man. Sure. Yeah. I you yeah. know, uh, I really love what Jesse did from prep extra to five star preps that is just mind blowing. Because yeah. I feel like prep extra. We didn't get prep extra until after we graduated. You know, what I mean, they didn't they, they covered Knoxville sports with KIL that, you know, the that. But when they made it prep extra mm -hmm. in from pep, prep extra to five star preps and then you got max preps, you've got on three, you know, we're, we might have to give out rankings. Pretty we soon. are. We are. As this show keeps getting bigger. And like I said, hate on us all we want. We came up with it first. Sorry. I mean, we did. Make your all's own show. It is yeah. West Center, but make your all's own show. We'll give I, love to good teams, yeah, and players, and players. Like you know, that's the one Coaches. thing that, that is different about us because we we broke down coaching changes, coaching jobs, coaching hires, player transfers, mm -hmm. uh, injuries. Yep. And we have a new coaching uh, job open. Gatlinburg Pittman's coach went and took yep. that Georgia job. More money, a good program, leaving a good program in Gatlinburg Pittman. Whoever gets in there, if they hire from within or they hire somebody, here's the challenge. You got a great squad. You're going to win the region. But it comes down to that third round game against Alcoa every year in 3A. So that's what the goal is, is to can you get over the Alcoa hump? And and it's a great program, great facilities, beautiful setting in Gatlinburg. 
But whoever the coach is, I hope they make the smart hire. And the sad thing is it's right before spring practice when, you know, you're getting to the nitty gritty. You need to have your philosophy and who it is. So they might hire from within or they may not. You never know. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Shane McGee dropping some knowledge real quick. This makes the third team Brody's played for in three years. Really? I remember back in the day you had to sit out. I know I had to sit out when I transferred from Bearden to West. So, yeah. You had to sit out a year. A calendar. Yeah. yeah, because it, like if you if you were you had to get some type of a special thing back in the day of why you were there, you know, like why were you like was it and he and he'll probably get it because the family actually moved to Maribel. But it's like, why are you the, the rules have changed over the years and you got to think this was the early 2000s and so forth. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, let me see here. He was at Catholic his freshman year. Look at that. So he was at Catholic, then he goes to Bearden, and now he's at Maryville. So, wow. Shane, yeah. always, man, I love you, dude. You, yeah. you, can, you yeah. always bring this stuff, man, to help yeah. us out. I love you, man. Love my dude, Shane so, McGee. Yeah, it's my cash. Sure. But without further ado, one last thing. I do want to just state something about our West Rebels. Um, uh, saw a little uh, – uh, I can't say – I just I don't want to reveal, but I did see a little preview of what West has on offense this year. Boys putting in work without coaches being present on spring break. That's how bad they want that three P. And uh, I'm I'm proud to say that uh, I think that the offense. I know we lost some key guys, but we got some dogs that want to prove themselves that they belong and they want to write their story and they want to keep it going. And uh, um, I'm very excited for spring ball. Uh, when they actually put the pads on because uh, uh, I was really impressed with what I was seeing with the receivers and uh, quarterbacks working on their own time. Really special to see too. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to, re to report that without giving names. So, yeah. So Shane, I appreciate you any way I can help George Diaz. I hope he's still on because he's ready for March madness. He says, I'm ready to see what you boys have in the West side of the bracket. To me, that's the best side. Best games will come from there. So, two pair. Let's start talking about this NCAA tournament, man. Um, you know, I don't know if you filled out a bracket. I filled I've filled out. Got one. A, I've got about a. I got ninety. About a, right now, I'm on my like fifth or sixth right now. Well, you're four better than me because I filled out one today. I know I'll fill out a few more, but I also wanted to see. I normally go for ten, but this year I'm gonna push the limit. I'm gonna push it to the limit. I'm gotcha. I'm gonna see how many brat. I'm gonna see how good the, the old mind is. I'm going to yeah. see how the old mind is. Well, you know, if I can say this about the tournament and looking at some mm -hmm. of these teams, obviously five teams stole bids from teams, you know, like St. John's didn't get in. Uh, Akron. Oklahoma. Uh, Akron. Akron stole yeah, a bid. Yeah, Akron stole uh, a bid. NC State stole a bid. Five NC games State in five stole. days knocked off Duke, Virginia, and Carolina. NC State stole a huge bid. I mean, and they beat these teams by a decent margin. I mean, they they ran Duke off the court. They ran Virginia in overtime and realistically pulled away from Carolina. And I was shocked to see that because I thought that was Carolina's tournament, man. I let, me, let me say this. All the number one seeds did not look like number one seeds except UConn. UConn. UConn showed you what a number one seed was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Houston got ran out the floor by Iowa State. Horrible. Tennessee just ran out the floor by Mississippi State. And loses the one seed. North Carolina gets smacked, smacked by NC State. And <laughs> Purdue got beat by Wisconsin. With not Wisconsin. Yeah. You got beat by Wisconsin. So, in Indiana, it was a home game for them. I mean, how has that happened? How does that happen? How does Tennessee lose in Nashville? Oh, dude, you know what? I asked somebody. I, I I talked to my friend, and he's a Kentucky guy. Tennessee, Kentucky, and Alabama all lost that Friday. Tickets were like five bucks, probably for Saturday's game. Check this out. First time, first time, all three seeds lose. On the same day since 1983. 
Yep. Check this out. Houston put up the lowest point total by a number one team since the AP poll of 82 with oh 41 God. points. God. They stink. This they is... stunk. <laughs> I mean, I don't – and they looked so good against Kansas two weeks ago on their senior day at home, and they lay a complete egg, egg. in the Big 12 tournament. Completely. You know, there are some coaches, and I hate to say this too, Pear, there are some coaches that just can't shake that mantra – that they choke in the postseason. And Kelvin Sampson, unfortunately, I don't have anything against Kelvin. I don't. But they had last year a squad that was supposed to be have a, be virtually the Final Four in their backyard there in Houston. They had, and they had, Miami I, ran them off the court last year. Miami did. Miami ran them off the court. Pick. Houston, Houston had a lottery pick last year. Yes. Yes. They had a lottery pick. A, a lottery pick. Not, yeah. not for, just first round. He went lottery. Yeah. The guy that they had last year, man. Yeah. They've had talent for the last three years. And and even in 2022, they were like supposed to be very high, highly ranked or what have you in 2022. And and they just looked awful. They they looked bad. I mean, like they and, were, like as they got through the season. I don't know if it was injuries or or what happened, but if they don't do it this year, when are they going to do it is the question. You know, they've got a number one seed. They're going to have their first two games in Memphis. Then they're going to be in Dallas, which is four or five hours away from them. And then they get to Phoenix, which is Arizona. It's not Texas. But still, it's like they've got a path. But can they walk that path? And truth be told, I See, A and M could possibly beat them in that second round. The way A and M crashes the boards, and Buzz Williams is a hell of a coach. Okay, hey, I like that matchup, but Nebraska, mm. Nebraska, cool. they, got, they got a kid. They got a kid that can shoot, and when I tell you that kid can shoot, he can flat out shoot it. Um. Just looking at how that matchup would be, I love the way Texas A&M get after it the way they played Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Tennessee couldn't hit these shots that I think Nebraska could hit. Mm -hmm. And but, didn't A&M beat Kentucky that, that in that in that Friday game? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his name is uh, Kasai Tamanaga. Tama, Tama mm -hmm. Kasai Tamaga. Tamanaga. Tamanagaha. Tamanaga. I don't even know. Man. But he, can play, he can shoot, yeah. Yeah. You won't talk about shooters, but Texas A&M's got one of the better players. Actually, one of the better players in the country. I love Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor is uh, – he's one of the best uh, – he's one of the best guards in the country, and he, he gave Tennessee all type of fits. Um, I got, I got, I like Texas A&M, but the way uh, Br Bryce Williams and um, Tamanaga, <laughs> Tamanaga, 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 that's his name, Tamanaga. Tamanaga. The way Tamanaga shoots the rock, Tamanaga can, he can really shoot. Like, if he has an off game, that's because Texas A&M and Tyrese Radford d them up. Like, Wade Taylor is phenomenal. Like, it, if the country has not got to see him, we have get to see him because he's in the SEC. Yeah. He's one of them guys. He's one of them guys that could have a tournament run. If, if, if people remember Miami last year with Norchad Ormir, um, who uh, – you know, he was undersized at center going up against guys, but he just has this art of rebounding the ball. Kind of reminds me of C.J. Black back in the day for Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You'll love a kid for Texas A&M named Henry Coleman III. The guy is 6'8", maybe, but I'd say he's probably closer to 6'6". But mm -hmm. he's a power forward, and he is always tasked with not only defending a guy five or four inches bigger than him, um, but – he just finds a way to rebound the ball and kicks it out to shooters and uh, and does his job on and and he can get you some garbage putback points too. Um, I like that kid a lot. Buzz Williams 
Uh, not only is he a snappy dresser with the mafioso suits, but he can coach too. And I was surprised they had as bad of a year as they is because they're paying him a lot of money. They took him from Virginia Tech a few years ago and so forth. And I'm just surprised their program's not more as advanced as it is. Kind of disappointing like in football too, if you think about how much money they they paid them coaches a lot. Jimbo Fisher couldn't get it done. Yeah, and now they're going to pay uh, what's his name from Duke that they just got. Uh, 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 what's his name uh, there down in uh, Elko, Mike Elko. So, Mike Elko. Yeah. Mike Elko. So yeah, I, I um, just think Texas A and M, Texas A and M, far as on a national level, Sumlin was like the last one that was on, like had it on a national level. And he got screwed. He got screwed. I mean, you know, Jimbo didn't do much better than Sumlin. I mean, Sumlin beat Alabama. You know, he had Johnny football. Sumlin beat Alabama. Yes. Um, and then you look at even going further back, R.C. Slocum. That's like the, the last coach that was had him in a – R.C. Slocum had him in a national conversation. Yeah, and they won the Big 12 beating uh, – um, uh, what's their names? Nebraska that one year and so forth. So they've, they've, Sir I Parker. Mean, Shout yeah. out to our guy, Sir Parker. Sir Parker. I mean, and that win, anybody remember that win when they played for Texas A&M yeah. back in the day? So, yeah. How about this? Brandon Stewart at quarterback. Yeah. Who left Tennessee, who came in with Peyton and, and helped uh, Texas A&M ultimately beat Kansas State that helped Tennessee get that Fiesta Bowl bid once Tennessee beat Mississippi State in the SEC title game. So, yeah, so for sure. Well, you know, so let's look at it. So, so yeah, so we had these – I'm looking at this bracket. You know, we had team steal bids. Indiana State, net ranking of 29. And they had – what's his name? The the nerd? The, the nerd? They had the Avila. Different name from? Avila. Avila, yes. I heard he's going to tra- – he should transfer to UT. He should. He should give him whatever INIL deal you need to give him to get him some exposure. Shoot. Let's let's give a shout out to Josh Schertz, who was the old former head coach at LMU, who took an Indiana State program and has really just transformed it back to a basketball program. Now, what what kills me is you got teams like Indiana State, mm-hmm. St. John's, yep, Beaton Hall, Pitt, Pitt. Yeah, which I thought Pitt has a very strong group with uh Henson. Henson will be playing on the next level. Yeah, uh, Leggett, Leggett will be playing on the next level for uh, uh Coach Capel up there at Pitt. Yeah, I'm a, who's I'm, the Spanish guy that plays for them that can hit three pointers? I think his last name is Garcia or so. I mean, he he's a big guy that can hit threes for them and so forth. Um, he's yeah. been a staple for them. But I, I think I think it's a school like Indiana State. You you lose. Okay, Indiana State. When there's teams that aren't supposed to win that conference, that's what knocks you out. Yep. Here's a school that should have been in the tournament: South Florida. Oh yeah, South yeah. Florida. South Florida. Shout out to um, Abdur Rahim, who mm-hmm. is in his second year at the school. Yep. Phenomenal group. I remember we had a show, and I think that they were playing either Memphis, and they're, they're one of the Snowmageddon's. Yep. Absolutely handled Memphis in Memphis. I was very impressed with that group. South yep. Florida is one of those schools that I feel like should have got in. Um, was there any other school that you could think of? I mean, a, a lot of people were arguing Oklahoma was like, the, I think they were the first team that was left out of, if like, if you were ranking them, it was like, I saw Oklahoma, Pitt, um, Indiana State, and um, and St. John's were the first four that were, all, that would have been in had those conference champions not been upset, you know, if Carolina mm-hmm. had handled their business, if, you know, the A-10 had had their, their, their business, you know what I mean? The point is, they were out. What's even more interesting is they actually declined the NIT, which, you know, that's starting to become a trend now that teams are declining the NIT. North Carolina declined the NIT last year, you know, and so, and I get it. Chris Beard was very vocal from Ole Miss saying, 
I want to make sure that the guys that don't want to be here are gone and I'm starting to recruit. So that's why the NIT is nothing for me. I'm trying to get ready for next year. He was very vocal about why he declined the NIT. Well, nobody wants to be known as the, the 71st best team in the country. That's true. What it boils true. Because I remember a year that Michigan won the NIT with Robert Trailer, <laughs> Mark Taylor, Lewis Bullock. You remember that squad? I do remember that squad. And I they were it. happy as hell to win the NIT. NIT. Yeah. Yeah. Teams were happy to be playing extra basketball. I guess they liked each other. They wanted to prove that. They, I guess it was almost like they wanted to show the NCAA we really did belong. So we're going to win this tournament instead. I, I don't know. There was a pride thing back then. But I mean, now South Carolina won the NIT. South Carolina won at one time. Ronaldo Balkman went crazy in the garden. Yep. Um, El Is that El what got him drafted by the Knicks, to be honest with you? I think it was. And Stephen A. Smith losing his shit. I I, I remember it like crazy. So uh, crazy. I, I'm trying to think of some guys that made some NIT performances. The NIT was always seen as a um, – like a lower class tournament and mm-hmm. and and guys think about it I, I remember UT played in the NIT and lost both times at home Buzz Peterson was the coach if I'm not mistaken Buzz Peterson then Conzo and then oh okay because the 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 one Conzo lost Conzo lost two NIT games at home wow back to back years they beat Savannah State in, in, in the first round, but then lose to MTSU at home. Oh, my God. That's what I'm saying. Like, NIT is one of those you kind of – it's cool to win it, but if you lose it, yeah, if you lose it, that's, that's like, yeah, you shouldn't have been in the tournament. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it, it proves a point. I think one year Clemson or, or Virginia Tech was bitching and moaning that they didn't get into the tournament. And bam, first round in the NIT, they get bounced. And it's like, well, you just proved the committee that you didn't belong. Maybe you play harder, but at the same time, you really didn't make a case for yourself three days after the fact. I mean, I'm just saying. And, and, you know, when, when Tennessee lost, you saw guys that already checked out. Like during that MT, Tim TSU game, I go back to that game because I remember it vividly because I'm there, you know, I'm watching it because the NIT is a little different than a regular home game. Mm -hmm. You don't get all the theatrics of the pyro. I I didn't even announce the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, Jeff Jordan and regular announcements. Yeah, just basic, just a basic. It's it's just a it's just a venue. It's just a venue that's hosting it. It's just a a venue thing. So it's yeah. not the theatrics of the NCAA where they got the big screen and all that and so forth. You know, it's just a. It's very second class, very second or third class. Very second class. Oh. And here's the other thing: the final is not even in Madison Square Garden this year. It's in Indianapolis. No offense, but in Hinkle Fieldhouse. I mean, you know, I I, I don't know, like. What's the spectacle of that? You get to play at MSG, you know, at least in the and Air Final Four. Or you used to. This is what the NIT every year should be hosting it in Madison Square Garden. Always. It, that, that's tradition. That's tradition. So, you know, I mean, but I guess, you know, just to make sure that we get back to this tournament, there were so many teams and there's so many matchups. I'm looking at this bracket, and of course, we're going to fill it out together. And all those that are in the comment or chat box, please, we say a game. Tell us who you got. Hey, we need all the comments right now. All the comments right now. If there's a game you want to talk about, George, we're going to go to the West bracket because I know Two Pair is UT, but he also has got a little bit of North Carolina investment in this as well and so forth. So you, I want to go to that West bracket you know, just to do something different. Everybody seems to be going to the East uh, first and working away around. We can go to the West bracket first if we want. Uh, to. A game, a game that really intrigues me, though. Yeah. A game that intrigues me is this five twelve matchup between St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. I got to watch Grand Canyon uh, beat San Diego State this year. 
St. Mary's, I got to watch them beat Gonzaga. And you want to talk about a game that's going to be up and down, up and down, up and down, spacing the floor, shooting, because St. Mary's got a dude by the name of Dukas. Mm-hmm. I am a fan of Dukas. When I tell you he is one of these guys that you're going to love to watch, um, plays an incredible pace. Um, I also also like uh, Augustus Marshallonis, Sarunish Marshallonis' son of St. Mm-hmm. Mar- <laughs> if you guys remember Sarunish Marshallonis from the Golden State days, way back in the days, way back in the days. So that's his son that's on the St. Mary squad. Yeah, 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 wow. man. And, um, mm-hmm. Now the point guard, for St. Mary's, he is very vital to what goes. Uh, Aiden Mahaney is just a complete floor general. I I just hope he has a great game. Like, Grand Canyon, for what it's worth, um, look out for uh, Tyon Grant Foster. He's averaging about 19.8 points, getting you about six boards a game. And Ray Harrison for Grand Canyon. Uh, the the one thing about like the Grand Grand Canyon, far as their notable games, uh, the notable game would have been the San Diego State game. Mm-hmm. At least no, at least one uh, twelve seed has defeated a number five seed in thirty two of thirty eight tournaments. Three of the six number 12 seeds failed to win a first round game have occurred in the past eight tourneys. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I, and can I say this much about those five twelve matchups without skipping ahead and mm. so forth? You have the potential for all four of those 12s to win those games, but you also have the potential for all those fives to win that game as well. And I only say that because, yes, it's a five versus a 12, but some of these teams might have been overseeded and some of these teams might have been underseeded. I look at a Grand Canyon being a number 12 seed or whatever. That record and how they played, you mentioned the victory over San Diego State. I could see them as a 10 seed, to be honest with you, as opposed to a 12 seed. And, I mean, they did not do St. Mary's, being the Western Coast Conference champion, any favors with that matchup. I mean, nothing at all. St. Mary's has only lost one game since Christmas. Yeah, and that was to Gonzaga on their senior night two weeks ago. uh, One game Christmas is – Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's why I think St. Mary's, St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, that makes a great matchup, but. Yeah, George, George has given his winners of what that he has in the uh, first round and so forth. So he's going to Grand Canyon on that one. So, yeah, uh, George, I, I, I like, I like the UNC. I like, I like Mississippi state. Yep. I agree with Bama. New Mexico has Eddie House's kid, and I agree with you there. Eddie House's kid is phenomenal. Um, You know what? Baylor Baylor is a trendy pick that could make it to the Elite Eight. I like what that is. And you know what? The Pac-12 schools, since this is the last year, I feel as if the Pac-12 schools are going to be on a mission because they haven't won since 97. Mm -hmm. And to get close, Arizona might be one of the only schools that could get close. But I I like what George Diaz did right here. The only one that I'm a little bit worried about is the Grand Canyon. I picked Grand Canyon in the other brackets, but I like St. Mary's a lot just because of the defensive intensity and they can suck the life out of a ball. Pause. (laughs) I want to throw one out there. First off, I, I agree with most of George's picks. The only one him and I are different on, I've got St. Mary's over Grand Canyon. Me too. But instead of Bama, I have Charleston upsetting Alabama. 
I have Charleston. I, think, I love College of Charleston. Yeah, they're good. If you've I not like watched them play, they're good. And and realistically, I almost thought that that's who Duke was going to have to play as the four seed over there on that side of the bracket or what have you. Um, but um, I guess they wanted Alabama and Charleston for whatever reason in the West. Um, that being said, Alabama's a team who I was liking about a month ago, but they have really fallen off. In fact, I was even commenting to some people that it wasn't that they um, – they, that they flopped miserably last year. But let's be honest, they were Brandon Miller, and there was a lot of watching Brandon Miller play last year. And and realistically, I felt this year it was more of a team-oriented where they didn't have a lottery pick or a top, top three pick that they were leaning on. It was everybody involved, and they were scoring. I mean, they were scoring 100 points, and, and, and uh, uh, but I was a little worried about their defense. And and I also said that if the defense isn't on and they're not scoring, they're going to get beat. Lo and behold, that's what happened against Florida Friday night in the SEC tournament when, like you said, three teams lost like that for the first time since, you know, <laughs> 1983. Um, that being said, though, College of Charleston can ball. And I don't know which Alabama team you're going to get. I mean, are you going to get the Alabama team from a month ago or the one that ever since Tennessee beat them um, there uh, in Alabama when game day was there, they have just looked horrible. It's like Tennessee let the air out of that bubble and they put everything into that game only to lose. Now, however, without skipping ahead, I thought the same thing about Auburn when Kentucky beat them when game day was there. But Auburn's turned it around and is playing some good ball right now. But does Bruce Pearl choke in the NCAA tournament? I mean, the, you know, that's one the final other four. thing too. He got one Final Four. He did. He, he did. One. He did get one Final Four. He did. Yes. He got one. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. He got one. Played in one title game. That's right. That's right. Didn't he have to beat Kentucky to get there too, if I remember correctly? Auburn beat Kentucky to get to that Final Four, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. I can't really recollect. I'm yeah. not because it was 2019. It was 2019. We had to let we had to let uh, Shane our uh, Shane our statistician. Yeah, Shane Shane uh, Shane or George, whoever's on. I just want to know: um, was it was it Auburn beating Kentucky to get to that Final Four in 2019? Because I remember Virginia beat Purdue to get there, um, and uh, and I remember that um, Auburn got there to play Virginia and lost on a heartbreaker. I thought Auburn should have won that game in the Final Four against uh, against Virginia. So, mm -hmm. but uh, um, yeah, so. Uh, George has Grand Canyon beating Bama in the round of 32. So that's interesting. Um, you see, I like Grand Canyon, though. I, yeah. I like I liked what I saw from Grand Canyon against San Diego State. If if you if you want to get a glimpse of what Grand Canyon is, go to that San Diego State game where it's in Grand Canyon. They had a whiteout. The atmosphere is crazy. Uh, shout out to Dan Marley who got that school really going. Going, yeah. You know what I mean. Shout, shout out to him. But they have a new coach now, uh, in Bryce Drew, who I feel like that's the perfect school for a guy like Bryce Drew. Who, so Bryce Drew's coaching at Grand Canyon now. Is that yeah? What he played at now? Valpo. Played so Valpo. you know what would be really? I, I it would take a lot to get there, but isn't that kind of funny that that they got Bryce Drew and his brother Scott Drew's coaching Baylor has been coaching there for a while now. That'd be kind of unbelievable if, like, the tournament just went haywire and they met in Los Angeles in the Elite Eight in that side of the bracket. It would just be complete, you know. And that that and that Baylor team has got a front court and then Ray J. Dennis in the back. I love Ray J. Dennis. But the guy to watch for Baylor, um, is it Jacoby Walter? I think so. That kid is a lottery pick. Yeah, yeah. Baylor has always had athletes. I mean, everybody remember when they ran Gonzaga off the court a couple of years ago in the in the final? I mean, shoot, they did. So, yep, yep. Look, here it is, Shane. Shane coming through. It was Auburn beating Kentucky, seventy seven, seventy one. I knew it. I knew it. And and credit to you two pair for even remembering Bruce did make that. That Auburn team was phenomenal. They should have been national champs that year. They should have been national champs that year. No, so, what about the team that had Jabari Smith? I know. 
I know. What happened there? Th- that's what I'm saying. I think – is that the team that Miami bounced? I think Miami upset them and beat the hell out of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yo, they got pummeled. They got pummeled. They got rocked off the court. So. That Auburn team with Jabari, Jabari Smith, he, he was considered at the time the best player in the country. Mm-hmm. But then I think, what, Paulo – Paulo showed it. Paulo Bancaro. Paulo Bancaro. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know who else was on that Auburn team? Um, Walker Kessler, who transferred from North Carolina, was on that Auburn team. Walker Kessler. And oh, Walker Kessler had a pretty good rookie year that year in the NBA. A lot of people, some people okay. gave him a vote and did, and denied Paulo from getting the unanimous NBA Rookie of the Year that year. Turned himself into a, 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 a guy in the league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Shane, shout out to you, man. Always helping us out, honestly. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so let's do this bracket together. Are then, we okay? still in the West? Let's do the West. Okay, so all right. So by the way, I don't know if anybody watched it. Wagner was up on Howard by like 13 or 14 points. And Howard was just incredible. Uh not giving up. I mean, they ultimately fell. But, I mean, Wagner was out of timeouts and really kind of screwing up that last minute, uh, minute, two minutes in the game. But they just had such a big lead and knocked down those free throws. And Howard had a shot to win um, there at the end, three but uh, missed it. Three, three times. Cracks. Three, 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 cracks. three cracks. Three cracks and cracks missed it. So, so Wagner ended up uh, holding on and, and knocking off Howard. Funny enough story, I actually went with Howard uh, it was a flip of a coin, you know. That I, I always screw up on the first four games, man. I just never can pick nobody, those. Hey, no, hey, nobody cares. Nobody they cares. don't. They nobody. don't. But you know what happens? Something like what happened with Syracuse a couple of years ago where they played their way in and got to the second weekend, and I'm like, why did I pick them? You know, like, I mean, I didn't have them that far. I mean, so that's, that's the thing that's so funny. But you're right. Nobody does care. Nobody um, cares. But here's the thing, as nice of a story as it was that that Wagner did win tonight and so forth like that, it's going to be uh, over around uh, 4 o'clock uh, on Thursday in Charlotte. North Carolina should win that game very easily. Like, like anybody it. object in the chat box or YouTube pair, I've got North Carolina winning that one very easily. I like, I like North Carolina. Um I mean, there's just no way. I don't. I don't there's see no that. way. No, yeah. not, I mean, right. that's a home game for them. Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte is going to be full of North Carolina Tar Heel fans. Just absolutely. So mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's <laughs> like you shouldn't. You should not lose in in Charlotte. Like no, no. You, you shouldn't lose there. Um, I like. <laughs> I like North Carolina in that first game. Uh, Mich- Mississippi State, Michigan State. I'm I'm just not a believer in Michigan State, and I think Michigan State gets in there because so. And two pairs pass that bad boy around George Diaz. Oh, there, you <laughs> there you go. Right there Hold we on. go. You right there. There you go. There you go. There we go. No, keep going though, brother. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's a home game for them. Now, can I just have one beef or whatever? <clears throat> just one beef. <clears throat> this Michigan State thing. Why yeah. are they in the tournament? What, why Izzo! They? Izzo! Izzo! Preseason number five. Five. Got ran off the court in the Champions Classic. Didn't James Madison kick their ass that first game too? And they knew. We should have known then they were terrible. UT beat him in the exhibition game. That's right. That's right. Dalton Connect was connected. <laughs> and there they are, 19 and 14. I would have much rather had Indiana State take that bid as opposed to to damn Michigan you know State. What? If Indiana State would have handled damn business. Indiana State handles okay. business. We get Mississippi State and Indiana State, which would have made a better game. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, so. this game is going to be a close game, but it's not going to be to the excitement of what Indiana State and Mississippi State could have been. 
I mean, you talk about two different styles, defense, offense, going at it. You know, it would have been sexy. I I really think Mississippi State's going to run Michigan State off the court, man. I really believe that. I could be wrong, but I think Mississippi State is going – I mean, if they play the way they played against Tennessee and that suffocating defense – you know, one other thing, too, when you go in these matchups and you're picking, you know, you don't know how the rims are. I mean, there's so many things involved – I mean, and I don't want to make excuses for why some teams have failed or whatever, but, you know, it's the rims. It's it's also how are the refs going to ref the game? You know what I mean? Are they going to allow them to play? Or is TV Teddy going to take over? You know what I mean? It's just one of those things that you can't factor in. And also, is somebody going to get sick, you know, before the game? I mean, you've heard of stuff like that happening. But be it as it may, I mean, if the refs allow Mississippi State to play the way they played against Tennessee the other day, and they're allowed to play defense that way, I mean, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So. It's what what them young kids say. It's a wrap, boss. Yeah. So I'm going to speak for everybody. I've got Mississippi State sending Tom Izzo home, and, you know, they can go home and watch the 2000 Final Four again for the 24th straight year. So. You know what? I'm going to even go another one higher. I'm gonna go another one higher. I think I think we might be sending we we might be getting close to Izzo being gone. Like mm-hmm. Izzo, Izzo, Izzo coming up is been there. Let's see, Heath coat got done in '95. Yeah, Judd Heath coat got done in '95. Izzo's been the coach since '96. Yeah. Went to three straight Final Fours in 99, 2000, won it all. 2001, got ran off the court by Arizona. Um, That was a great Arizona squad. Um, They've been back to the Final Four, but I – They had one. They lost to North Carolina. Yeah. In Detroit. Let me ask you, was that in the national championship game or was that a Final Four game? I can't remember. I know North Carolina won. That but was, was that the championship? Game. In Detroit! In Detroit. And they ran their ass off the court or whatever. In like Detroit! That. Yeah. I mean, I remember I remember they got to the Final Four. They made it to the Final Four when it was Wisconsin, Duke, and Kentucky in 2015. And Grayson Allen was slam dunking all over Michigan State. Duke won that game by 20 points. I mean, while Kentucky and Wisconsin was going back and forth, Duke was as fresh as a daisy for Monday's game because they didn't even have to play the second half against Michigan State. They ran them off the court. They always screw up in the Final Four. Like, they don't win. They get there, but they always screw up. So, yeah. They got one. Okay. They got one. They, they did, did get win. They did. And that was 24 years ago? 24 years ago. The Flintstones. How like long? Cleves, Mo Peterson, Charlie Bell, Mike Chappelle, how, how, Andre how, Hudson. Hey, hey, question, James. How many Ooh. cars have you had since 2000? Since two, How many cars? Cars. Since the last time he won a title. Seven. Seven. You've had more cars than he's won championships. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, Izzo, we're, we're not saying this in a bad way. You were a Hall of Fame coach. Oh, we, yeah. We're, 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 we are talking about the tournament. Like, Izzo, is an, he's an incredible coach. Yeah. Like, he's one of those guys. Like I, I know that he's gotten guy. paid over there by Michigan State but he really could have made a dime off of Dan Gilbert if he had taken that Cavaliers job. They wouldn't have done nothing, but he still could have gotten that money and said he coached in the NBA. He would have been set for life. I feel like Izzo's way of coaching wouldn't me- me- like we didn't like you know what John Beeline was in the NBA. Oh yeah, yeah, horrible. Yeah, like the guy that could translate to the NBA with his style of coaching. Jay Wright. Yeah. Jay Wright. Would, and I feel like Jay Wright is a better college basketball analyst. But if an NBA job comes up, I would hire Jay Wright. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you know, I think that the best coach that, 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 that made the transition 
Um, but now he's not even the coach anymore was Brad Stevens from Butler. You know, I mean, it, now he's an executive there, the general manager for the Celtics. And they look like they're, they got another great squad this year, but I'm just saying that like, it, you know, Billy Donovan didn't do anything with the Oklahoma city thunder. I think Billy Donovan could have been like the next Mike Krzyzewski had he stayed at Florida. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he really, you know, could have yeah. been like a staple there. So. And, and that's the thing. Like, Billy Donovan would have went down as a coach K. Yeah. Because he would have been able to be like Gary Williams, have a losing season because you won two straight titles. God. You could have a losing season. Yeah. But then if you have a losing season, we want you to get the same type of Joe Kim Noah's. We want you to get Mike Miller's. We want you to get the the United Hasms. We want all those type of guys. We want those. Al Horfords, we want those Corey Brewers. Oh, if you can go to Tennessee and steal a Lee Humphrey, we'll take him too. That's what was happening when he was there. He had like a prime spot. And then you look at this Florida team now, it's not what the Florida program once was. No, we're close. Tennessee feared. But beat those teams. Yeah, it was about matchups. They matched up well. Tennessee matched up well with Florida. It's just Tennessee couldn't match up well with the other teams in the tournament. And Florida made winning those two tournaments easy, man. I've yeah, never but, seen two a back to back make that look easy. But so. but people forget who was beating that team that won a national title. Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. As Dane Bradshaw. Yeah. Yeah. As Chris Lofton. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ask Jawan Smith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, ask, it, ask, ask the CJ Watson. That's the other thing about this tournament. It's about matchups, too. You know, you don't know. If, if it goes chalk, which it very rarely does, okay, great. But then if, if somebody loses – and the the bracket opens up. Some teams can get hot just because of the style of play is better than what the team that caused the upset did, and they're just on jubilation that you know you have to bring that intensity six times, man. You really do. I mean, you know, going back to the picks, we agree Mississippi State. Anybody can chime in. I mean, do we as a group want to just go with Grand Canyon over St. Mary's? Do we want to do that, or are we going to go St. Mary's or Grand Canyon? How do we want to do that one? As whoever's in the chat, whoever's watching us, we'll, too, we'll how do we want we'll to go? go to Grand Canyon. All right, we'll go Grand. Is if okay. St. Mary's wins, look out for Marshall Onis. Mm -hmm. Look out for Dukas. Look out for Mahaney. And two pair told you first. Okay. All right, so we're going to go with Grand Canyon as a group on that one, okay? And we'll get 112 over the five. Okay, what about Alabama versus Charleston? Do we go Alabama or do we go with who I think might cause this upset, College of Charleston? What does everybody think at this point? You can like chime Alabama. in on the comment box or whatever you all think. So I like Alabama, to be honest with you. That coach ain't bad. Um, what, what, who is it? It's um, – I can't think. Yeah. He I like that. Yeah, he can coach. Why Alabama plays an NBA style. Alabama, who who's gonna stop Mark Sears? No, yeah. Not who's not gonna, anybody on there. Who who who's gonna who's gonna stop who's gonna stop Nelson? Who's gonna stop Estrada? Yeah. I mean they just have to defend. They just have to defend if the three. Grand Canyon defends Grand Canyon wins. Yeah. But Alabama plays an NBA tempo and style. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. All right. So moving on to the next game. And let me just tell you this. This is another team that they stink. I mean, for as Who much for, 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 for as much uh, I hear about them every year, I still don't know how Brad Brownell still has a job or whatever. They're the greatest suck thing ever in college basketball in the ACC. They never get a win when you need them to, and they always lose when you need them to, or you don't need them to. It's Clemson. I think New Mexico <laughs> wins this game over Clemson. I think this is a classic 11 over 6, yeah. and Clemson looked so bad in the last couple weeks of the season. I'm surprised they even got in. I would have rather seen Pitt in that spot as opposed to Clemson, to be honest with you. 
I mean, I mean that. I, I, I'm just telling you. So if anybody disagrees with me, that's fine. We'll put Clemson in there. But they have done absolutely nothing. Their best win was against Carolina um, at, 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 I believe, at home, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the other time they played Carolina, they got beat pretty good. Um, they, they just play to the level of their competition. And I think New Mexico, with Eddie House's kid, is going to get this done. That's what I think. So yeah. can, I, can I tell you something else? Yeah. Look out for Jamal Mashburn. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, – I got I got some comments real quick. Oh, no, New Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico. Ugly. Georgia's got Bama. Interesting enough, Shane's – I'm going with Charleston just for the magical upset, and I like their campus laugh out <laughs> They, hey, Charleston is pretty. It really I've already is. been challenging Charleston a few times, Bucko. <laughs> Me right. too. Everybody's going with New Mexico, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with New Mexico. Thank you, hey, everybody. So Jamal Mashburn. Jamal, Jamal Mashburn. Mashburn. Hold on. How cool is this? Jamal Mashburn and Jalen House, Eddie House and Jamal Man. That's crazy. That is pretty cool. No, that is pretty cool. So, yeah, for sure. So, that is a wild. I've got stories that can't leave there. Laugh out loud talking about Charleston over there. Shame. <laughs> hey. Okay. Let me ask you this. You That's got one of my college tours. I, I took a college tour to uh, college, college of Charleston. It's a gorgeous city. I mean, you know, honestly, a lot of history there. Good good seafood. If you like seafood, uh, you know, good, good, good stuff over there. Um, Baylor versus Colgate. The three versus 14. I like Baylor in this one. I think Baylor's athleticism. Baylor's front court much. is crazy. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's unbelievable. Baylor's lost 10 games. I can't believe they've lost 10 games this year. They How is that possible? They've got a great coach. Um, yeah. I won a national sure. champion. He's a national champion, what, three years ago? So, yeah. You want to talk about building a program. And taking it from the from nothing. Remember the scandal at Baylor? The, he took it to – he built it. I mean, that's it. He built the program. Like, Baylor's in that conversation. And if – Baylor's got to be able to – if they can win more titles, which I think as a three seed, it's not far fetched. It's, it's not, not far for them uh, to make a run because when you got a guy like when you got a guy like Ray J. Dennis, who I think is just an incredible, an incredible ball player, um, the front court play and their athleticism, it would take them over the top, though. I really think so. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you this. If, if, if it goes the way I think, that Baylor-Arizona game for that uh, in the Sweet 16 could be very, very special of a game to watch. Honestly, a lot of scoring if you like offense in that game. Honestly, I really believe that. So um, Dayton versus Nevada. I like Nevada in this one. I, mean, I, I You know, a lot of people were uh, saying that the uh, NCAA – um, rewarded, but also dissed the Mountain West teams um, with how many bids they gave, but where they seeded them. And Mountain West uh, has been actually entertaining basketball this year. Um, Dayton is the seven seed with a 24 seven re record. Nevada's 26 and seven. I've got Nevada. So whoever, whoever disagrees, let me know. And so forth like that. So uh, in, in this bracket that I had, I had picked Dayton. Had you? Okay. Yeah, I, just for that bracket. But here's why. If you pick Nevada, you pick Nevada because the Jared Lucas is giving you 17, 17 and, and, and two. You know who the scores are. And Blackshear, man, Blackshear giving you 15. Like Blackshear does a little bit of everything. He giving you he giving you some rebounds to it, like four point nine a clip, an assist at four point nine a clip. What I like about Dayton though, Deron Holmes. Deron Holmes, yeah. Deron yeah. Holmes. Like Deron Holmes could be a guy that we could be saying is very special in this tournament. Like he's one of those guys that if Dayton makes a run, it would be Deron Holmes or Nate Santos. Yeah. 
Check out yeah. Nate Santos. Really I forgot cool. about Santos. Yeah, Deron Holmes was one of those guys that turned down a bunch of NIL money from teams like Duke that were trying to get him to transfer. Um, he also um, had put his name in the NBA draft for a minute, but pulled out to go back to Dayton. So this is like his year, you know, like, I mean, I think they kind of had a little bit of a disappointing thing in the tournament last year. So I, I could see that game being a very competitive game. I just like Nevada for whatever reason. Um, George Diaz has Nevada. Shane, who you got, Nevada or Dayton? But in your bracket, who do you got? Or whoever else is watching, throw don't be don't be shy. Put your comment in the comment box of who you got. We ain't judging here. We're filling this out together and submitting this. So I mean, I'm fine either way with going with Dayton or Nevada. I just think that Nevada's played a tougher schedule, and the Mountain West seemed to be yeah. a tougher conference. Yeah. I go Nevada. Go with Nevada? Okay. I go with Nevada. 10, oh. 10 beats to seven. I go with Nevada. All right. And then this last matchup is interesting from a standpoint that I've never heard of a coach getting fired before before a, a conference tournament. And you talk about major league happening in the NBA where the Indians went on in that fictional movie. Yeah. Long Beach State makes the tournament and gives Munson, who was the original Gonzaga coach before few, you know, a lot of people forget that Mon yeah. Munson was the coach there at the Gonzaga, you know, and when they started their, their Cinderella and there's Long Beach state against Arizona in Salt Lake city, a two versus 15 go. Yo, uh, I really like not going to lie, not going to lie in this bracket that I pick. I picked Long Beach State just for the hell of it. Wow. You know why? It's not far-fetched. They lost last year. They screwed me last year, Arizona did. Think about this. Think about this. There is a there's a few things we gotta really think about. Arizona. This is the last year to pack 12. Mm -hmm. So a lot is riding on this. Mm-hmm. Because if they lose this for the Pac-12, that's it. You will, you will hit like that will be like the coffin to the Pac-12. Not happening, George. But it, it, you never know. I mean, here's it's the not thing. Far fetched. It's not. It, it, well, here's the thing. They lost in the first round last year. Who? They, they might not this year though. They may not. Let, let me just tell you I'm, this. I'm picking I'm picking Arizona, but in this funny, this funny joke bracket called Ain't No Got Dad Gum Way bracket. That's what this bracket is called. Ain't no got dad gum way. Ain't no way, boss. It ain't happening, boss. Even if you thought it was gonna happen, like I got a I got a 15 playing a 10. Ain't no got that go way balls ain't no way all i'm gonna say is this um there's a reason caleb love is not at north carolina anymore uh as much as he was the hero that 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 got them to the championship game last year carolina fans wanted to kill him because he shot wanted to kick him game. out him and rj davis just did not mesh and it was Caleb that left, and RJ was the ACC Player of the Year for Carolina. I say all that, that Caleb Love has shot Arizona out of games by taking ill-advised shots, and he's not that great of a shooter. It, when he's on, he's on. But when he's off, he just takes too many shots away from other guys because I really thought they had the best starting lineup, and they looked like gangbusters at the beginning of the year. But they have lost some games. Like Oregon, they should have won the Pac-12. Here's the thing about this. That was a, a bid that should have been an automatic where somebody like Indiana State gets in. And you got Oregon, who won the last Pac-12 championship with Dana Altman as the coach. You you know, Phil Knight is somewhere just like tickled to death. Oh, he got a he gave him a million dollars for fun. Honestly, he had to. You know what? The, it, what I'm just thinking about this: if Phil Knight was a gambling man, yeah, <laughs> think of how much money he would have put on Oregon to win, like. Could have put 
millions, millions. Like that that couch guy, the one from Houston that put it on the Astros and won the the whatever his name is, the the furniture dude. So yeah, yeah he, he won a bunch of money putting it on the Astros or whatever. But so. you know, just, just thinking about it, man. Like if that were to happen, you know, like that's. That would be really wild. I, I, I just can't believe Oregon was the last team to win the Pac-12. You would have thought, like, UCLA. UCLA, Arizona. I mean, Arizona. I don't know. To, to have Oregon win it, though? Yeah. The significance of that. Because I, I feel like Nike has their hand in everything. They do. <laughs> they, they're they Nike. I mean, they are. They're You know? So, shoot. I mean, so – I, I guess if Phil, it, to finish it, I'll get Arizona in there over Long Beach State. Yep. Um, to to move to the to the next round, um, we'll do a little rapid fire just because I know we got a lot more games to pick. But let me just ask you this: So UNC Mississippi State depends again. I mean, UNC should win this game on paper. But I also thought Tennessee was going to beat Mississippi State and Nashville. So what the hell do I know? I mean, we got run off the court. So, yeah. So, uh, Mattress Mac. Thank you, George. Mattress Mac was the one that put all that money on the Astros and, and won it. Thank you. So, thank you, George. So, yeah. so, George has UNC, Grand Canyon, New Mexico, and Nevada. Wow, New Mexico over uh, – oh, no, no, sorry. No, he's got Baylor over New Mexico. My bad. Okay, Baylor. I like, I like UNC. I like yeah. Grand Canyon. I like Baylor. I like Arizona. I like those. Oh, okay, so that's what we'll go with. So so yeah. based on this bracket, we're going to go with that on that one. So UNC <laughs> Grand Canyon, uh, Baylor over New Mexico, and then Arizona – uh, carries the torch for the Pac-12 into the Sweet 16, where they will be in Los Angeles. That's where these games these games transition from those opening rounds that UNC is the one seed going all the way out west to Los Angeles. I mean, you talk about two different coasts right there, honestly. So, yeah. Um, but uh, All right, so then let me ask you this. So we've got UNC and Grand Canyon on one side there. And then Baylor and Arizona, these games will be played in Los Angeles uh, next weekend. So I guess we got UNC beating Grand Canyon. The The story ends for Grand Canyon at this point. So. At yeah, this point, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so we got UNC. And I agree with George. I've got Arizona uh, beating Baylor. It's going to be a hell of a game. But I, I think that Arizona <clears> – <throat> Uh, has got something to prove after their first round loss last uh, year. They just screwed. You know who I'm taking? You know? I'm taking. I'm taking Baylor. Are you taking Baylor? Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm taking Baylor in this bracket right here. Yeah. Year. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely. This is, my, this is my rebels with a cause bracket. It ain't gonna happen, bracket. It ain't gonna happen. I see <laughs> that. All right. So then. <clears throat> Here's the here's the thing that's really interesting. I've got Arizona versus UNC, and yeah. I think we all do. But I kind of agree with George in Los Angeles. I could see Caleb Love screwing North Carolina. I mean, that would be. Hey, you you want to know something funny mm. in, in this bracket? But the one we're talking about, like what we're talking sure. about, ours. Um, I, I would have. I would have Arizona beating UNC. But I felt like at a time before the ACC tournament, I felt North Carolina might have been the second best basketball team in the country. They were playing like it. I mean, they were hitting threes. Armando Bay caught down low along with Ingram. That's a tough matchup for anybody. And they went seven to eight deep. I mean, they had eight guys they can rotate in and out. Kadu plays very good defense. So, I mean, you know, Cormac Ryan dr drilling threes, but yeah, they, they just looked a little off in that ACC tournament. But here's the truth of it. When it comes to Carolina, I've seen them lose in the ACC tournament countless times over the years, but they put it together and win the NCAA. So I've seen that before too. Case in point, that one year with Hansbro. I mean, they lost in the ACC tournament and then they just ran over everybody to win that 2009 NCAA title. Yeah, so. they did. 
Moon on the ring. Same with the uh, with that 2017 uh, squad that you know they lost to Notre Dame in the championship game and then came and and won. No, and Villanova. Villanova. Was that Villanova? Which one? I, I thought Villanova won the 2016 one, but North Carolina beat Gonzaga the next year and won the title. They came yeah. back to win it, and I think it was Joel Berry was the was the tournament MVP of that year. Kennedy Meeks was their center, and they beat Gonzaga. Everybody thought Gonzaga was finally going to win their first title, and Carolina won that game by like five or six points. Yeah, at the end, so. because uh, I want to say the. The Bryce Dr Johnson crew lost to Chris Jenkins and Villanova. Yes, yes. And then they came back the next year to win it all. But they didn't do that great in the ACC tournament. They didn't and so forth. And they they won. I mean, they they won the, the, the 17, the 2017 year after 16. So, but for this sake... I mean, do we go with Arizona? Do we go with North Carolina because of it being in Los Angeles? It's out there. And the Pac-12, like you said, it's in L.A. I mean, I don't know. It's like it, it, this could be the last Pac-12 team. And and how ironic that UNC bounces them and so forth and ends the, the Pac-12 conference. That'd be crazy. I mean. That'd be sad. Yeah. That'd be really sad. All right, so <clears throat> Shane, I haven't seen your picks, man. Do you got do you got an opinion on the North Carolina Arizona game? Because I could go either way in this game. <clears throat> Hell, you don't even know if Arizona gets that far, but I think they do. In my bracket that I filled out, the one bracket that I filled out so far, I do have Arizona in the Final Four as the West champion representative by beating North Carolina. And I only went with it being in Los Angeles. If this game was played in the other three sites, I would have given it to North Carolina, but I just think the jet lag and going out there at the time difference, I think that's going to hurt a team from the East coast. Cause usually Arizona should have been the number one seed out West. Had they not flubbed these last couple of weeks, you know what they're they talking about. I think I think the committee wants drama. Yeah, the committee wants some drama. Yeah, they want to see North Carolina and Arizona meet because of R.J. Davis versus Caleb Love. So yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, and then you got Shane saying between those two, he's got Arizona. So for the Rebels with the Cause bracket, I will go Arizona. I will go Arizona. So I'm, yeah. I'm 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 picking UNC. I'm picking UNC, but I, I think this will finally this game will finally show who's better without who. Yeah, I'm here yeah. for it. Let's yeah. make it happen. Because if it doesn't happen, I'm gonna feel very sad. Can, can I ask you a question, too, Pierre? Can you remember? Because remember, this is a different era. OK, so when you had guys transfer from programs, they had to sit out a year and things like that. But have you ever remembered a matchup that could potentially happen where you had these guys as a final four team two years ago and they're on opposite ends to get back to the final four? You couldn't write a better script than that. It sells itself without even talking about the other three games that would be going on that those two days. But I'm just saying that it just kills me to think about that it's like you have bragging rights for life on that one. That's one. And, like, and those Carolina fans that were, were, were praising him for making that shot that bounced Duke and, and got them to the championship, it's like karma could get you back that he bounces you with a three-point shot. And maybe you didn't hate him after all and wished he had stayed. Maybe they get it together. But I can't remember a time where somebody transferred from one school and potentially could have knocked them out the next year. I've never I, – I can't I, think I, of who it. Who would that be, though, to say? Oh. I, think about the the script. Yeah. You can't. You can't write a better script. You can't. In Los Angeles, I mean, of all places. In Los Angeles, of all places. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, Pac-12. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the East Bracket and the West Bracket are played on Saturday, the 30th, if I'm not mistaken. That's Easter weekend. I would be willing to bet that even if it is Connecticut against... Illinois or Iowa State, 
the Connecticut Iowa State game will be the first game, and they will make that UNC Arizona game the prime time game that Saturday night for the right to get to the Final Four. I, if I'm if I if I was making the TV matchups, that would be the sexier game to play second. Despite West or East, they always put the game that's the more sexy matchup last. And I just think that that would be your prime time Saturday night on the 30th for the right to get to the final four with the nets getting cut down and all that. So, yeah. So it is all about the money. So, yeah. So, all right, let's move over to the Midwest <clears throat> because this bracket is a bracket that could be a complete mess. It could go chalk. I mean, you've got so many coaches in this bracket that need to prove something. Mm-hmm. Matt Painter, is he going to choke for the second straight year? A lot of people have kind of been saying regular season Rick showed his ugly head last week about Rick Barnes in Tennessee. Um, you know, you, you uh, Dana Altman in Oregon, we mentioned that. Mark Few with Gonzaga. Is the, is the magic kind of running out? Because here's the thing. Gonzaga's been a top two or three seed the last few years. And for them to get a five, it's low, it's low. And, you know, you've got McNeese, who a lot of people are really on. Um, you they know, got grown they, men. Yeah, they do. They do. They got, and, new, they got, they got grown men. That That's yeah. the difference between Gonzaga and McNeese State. McNeese State got grown men. Yeah, yeah. Um, Real quick, since we're live, I just want to just state this. Virginia is managing to outdo themselves by uh, by setting setting basketball back hundreds of years. Um, They've barely scored, I think, 20 something points in this game. They're getting run off the court by Colorado State. No surprise. I finally got a first four game right because Virginia stinks. They stink. So, yeah. He can go home and watch his 2019 championship. And they're the only damn team that got to hold it for two years because of COVID. Honestly, they stink, Virginia. (laughs) Another ACC team that should have been replaced by Pitt. Hell, Wake Forest would have been a better pick. So, shoot. Hey, cut out the Jay Wright suit, though. Oh, he is. He, 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 dude, that guy and Buzz Williams, they know how to dress, man. The snazziness, man. I'm telling you. So, shoot. Is, is Jay Wright Italian? Jay Wright Italian? Jay Wright is Italian, I believe. He's he got to be Italian. Yeah, I think he, he is. I, I think it's just his mom married a, a, to get the last name right. So, but he's, he's half Italian. He is. So, yeah. But, um, all right, so George's picks for this one. Shane, throw yours out there too, man. George's got Purdue over Grambling, Montana State. Let me ask you this. I've got – I heard Montana State is actually pretty decent for a 16 seed, or, or maybe I'm wrong. They won the Big Sky Conference on a controversial call. I, I know nobody cares about the first four, but I picked Grambling in that game. I think Grambling could beat Montana State. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but yeah, so. But either way, do we agree Purdue will win that first round game? They, they they can't be bounced two years in a row. I mean, Purdue loses in Indianapolis. Come on, so. Purdue, Purdue, come on, Purdue, come on, Purdue. Like, Purdue. Glenn, Glenn Robinson ain't walking through that door no more. Conzo Martin ain't walking through that door no more. Let, let me just say this: Ed Austin ain't walking through that door no more. Two pair. I'm not gonna lie. If Purdue loses this game, another to like to lose to a 16 two years in a row, Matt Painter might as well just walk his ass into traffic. On I'm being dead serious there in Indianapolis because he will never be allowed in West Lafayette ever again, dude. If they lose if for the second straight year, and I'm going to tell you this: if that game is even remotely close in that second half, the Utah State and TCU fans will be rooting against them. And whoever was hanging out left over from the um, uh, uh, Marquette, Western Kentucky, Florida, and the Colorado Boise State winner fans hanging out still for that second session, they will all turn on Purdue in a heartbeat, honestly, no matter how many Purdue fans show up there in Indianapolis, if that game even gets to that point. But that being said, I think Purdue gets it done, and they're going to win that one. Um, as far as Utah State TCU goes, 
I don't know much about Utah State. Maybe you do too, Pierre. But I'll tell you this. TCU has had a couple of big wins this year in the Big 12. They, I, I saw them beat Oklahoma. They beat Kansas. Um, you know, they, they have been a pesky team. And the Big 12 Conference, I think, should be more heralded um, based with the teams that have got in compared to the Big 10. That's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but that's my thought that the Big 12 was the better conference top to bottom than, say, the Big 10. But I could be wrong. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of TCU. I like Emmanuel Miller, and then I, I love Jameer Nelson Jr. So uh, I, I definitely took TCU in that regard, just the way Jameer is able to, you know, be, you know what I'm saying, aggressive when he needs to be to score. And Emmanuel Miller can do a little bit of everything on the basketball court. So I, I chose TCU. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So here's the deal. I have TCU. You have TCU. George has Utah State. Shane has Utah State. So – if we have anybody else that wants to break that tiebreaker or whatever like that, because this is the show, this is the Rebels with the Cause bracket, okay? So anybody that participated in this, and we win this thing, we're going all to the Final Four, whether we like each other or not. So we're going we're going to the Final Four next year if we win the prize. And so uh, yes, like, they got to state their reasons for picking Utah State. Yeah, I want, I want a reason for Utah State or what have you like that, because those eight, nine games, man, I suck every year on those, man. They I, I think I get – they. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they they're in the way, man. And, and a damn eight got there to the final four last year. Damn Florida Atlantic beat Tennessee, beat Memphis. I mean, are you kidding me? Jesus. How do y'all let these sorry teams beat y'all? They stink. <laughs> they stink. <laughs> it's like bad morning breath. They stink. It really is. It, it, it is damn dragon breath. You know, it's the cool dragon breath. Party. It is dragon breath in house party. So shoot. Let's hear. For me, it's a coin flip. I'm okay with TCU too. All right, George. So you you broke the tie. We're going with TCU. So all right. Okay, McNee versus Gonzaga. The Cinderella who has become kind of a powerhouse that hasn't won it all yet <laughs> versus the new kids on the block, McNeese. So McNeese State got news. McNeese State got. They got shout, shout out to Shane's son. He helped him make the pick. I I, I, I hate going against a kid sometimes. He watch him be right, you know, honestly. Watch him be right. Hey, watch so. his son be right in Utah State. The more the motherfuckers weird by twenty five. <laughs> you know what I'll do? I'll go live on StreamYard and apologize to the entire <laughs> audience for being wrong with that. Especially if somebody's watching this, going, "Oh, that's a good pick by them." Okay, I'm gonna follow this to a <laughs> T or whatever like that. So yeah, I mean, they yeah. they're thinking it, thinking, it. Oh, "Oh, that was a horrible pick." Uh, you want to know something? I'm going to tell you this. But b- b- beside that Gonzaga McNeese game, mm. I really want to pick Samford to just put Kansas out of their damn misery. Put them out of their damn misery. Hey, hey in this bracket, I pick. Check this out. This is just a funny ass bracket. Sure. I pick Samford. Then Why I- not? Why not? Kansas sucks. They got run out of the gym on the first day in the Big 12. When has that ever happened? They got blown away. You know who I feel sorry for? Who? They got a kid on their team, Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too crazy. I get it. No, I get it. So, yeah, I get it. So. But what if they do? Like, people act like it, it couldn't happen. Listen. It could. Listen. It could. The The – let me just be fair. The fact that Kansas even got a four seed as bad as they've played these last three weeks. I don't give a damn who is out and who is the number three one season. Number one. All number I one. heard about was this. And I'm telling you, Hunter Dickinson is the biggest cancer of all time. No NBA team should even draft him unless you want somebody to carry equipment around next year. He is from a different era of basketball, and he has no place in the game. Can he dictate? Watch him go on a run with me insulting him. But he's been playing hurt. That McCullough guy, he's been out too. And they say that they're going to play. Yeah, 
at what percentage are you going to be good at or whatever? Sure, you'll beat a Samford, but I'm telling you this. I think Gonzaga or McNeese beats Kansas in that second round, even if Kansas gets out of the Samford thing. So, I mean, I, I, I'll pick Kansas um, in that one for us or what have you, but seriously, let's talk about the Gonzaga McNeese. We, we shouldn't even be wasting another breath on Bill Self's Jayhawks. Rock, chalk, crap, cock. That's what that is. So, yeah. Man. By the way, the score of the Colorado State Virginia game just started in the second half is 27 to 14. They oh, managed to score 14 points in 20 that's... minutes. Two pair. It reminds me of another team we watched this year. Eh? 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 You know what? Because guess what? They stink. They, they stink. stink. <laughs> Horrible. I mean, dude, somebody should wave a diaper in front of Tony Bennett right now. Honestly, just somebody change your kid in that arena and wave it right in their face. They stink. They so stink. they're terrible. But you know, um, I feel like if if Virginia can score a touchdown and maybe get a two two point conversion right here, they got yeah. a solid chance. <laughs> Hey, where's Bronco Mendenhall? Are they going to bring him out or what? So, <laughs> hey, listen. No, George has George has a point. Kansas gets knocked off in the round of 32 by Gonzaga. Okay. All right. So then let me ask you this. Is it Gonzaga? Is it McNeese? I mean, because let me tell you this. The trendy pick has been McNeese, it looks like, as the 12-5 matchups that I have seen. We, of course, went with Grand Canyon. The people say that usually two 12-5 matchups – or upsets happen. I have one already happening with JMU over Wisconsin to kind of skip ahead, but yeah. 12 seeds are nine and three against number 13. The last occurrence was the number 12 Oregon defeating the number 13 UC Irvine 73 to 54 in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey. I'll tell you this. If the Gonzaga team that was really in danger of missing the tournament shows up like they were in late December, early January, um, then, you know, definitely McNeese. Gonzaga has played a lot better at the right time now. I know that they lost. That game could have gone either way with them and St. Mary's the other day. But, I mean, could you imagine that their conference gets knocked out on the same day, like, you know, St. Mary's and Gonzaga, both five seeds lose to Grand Canyon and McNeese, respectively. It's not far-fetched. So, you know, I, mean, I love the drama. I want the yeah. drama. I want the yeah. drama. Yeah. Drama. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to go with McNeese on this one. I will probably be wrong about Gonzaga, but we have three McNeese's to one Gonzaga so far. So that's where I'm going to go with McNeese since it's 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 our together bracket. So, all right, McNeese wins. Now, let me ask you this. George, based on if McNeese plays Kansas, do you go Kansas or do you go McNeese? How do you, how do you feel about that? Shane also has a very good point. The Blue Bloods will get love no matter how they play during the season. This is true because they're the ones that put the asses in the seats. I hate to be that way. I mean, last year's Final Four, you could get tickets for 20 bucks. If you have three Blue Bloods and somebody else in there, those tickets are going to be $2,000. So that's the truth of it. So, yeah. I mean, but moving on, I think we all agree that South Carolina is going to bitch slap Oregon uh, in the 6-11 game there in Pittsburgh or are we, or do we think Oregon uh, makes a, uh, uh, you know, holds that flag for the PAC 12 and, and keeps it going off of their conference tournament championship last week. George has Kansas beating McNeese. If those two teams played. George has Kansas beat McNeese. If McNeese saw yeah. Kansas, Kansas would win. Ugh. I don't know. Kansas kind of just upset me the way that they lost in, in the Big 12. I, I mean, if the guys can play and they can put it together, then then it's Bill Self's best coaching job or something. I mean, I don't know. So, shoot. 
Well, but, let me. So, so we got South Carolina. I'm hey, gonna put, but guess what? 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 what uh, Stallion. What if they're playing possum? That's possible. I mean, it's possible. You, 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 you knew you were gonna get in. It was just about your seating. I mean, they got gifted in the Midwest, to be honest with you. They don't have to play Carolina. They don't have to play Kentucky. They don't have to play Connecticut. I mean, I, I, I'm just, what if they're it's playing? not that far. It, it, to be honest with you, if I was Kansas, I would be so glad that you don't have to see Houston until the Elite Eight, or I'm sorry, the Final Four, if that's how it plays out, chalk. And you don't have to worry about North Carolina, Arizona, Iowa State, or UConn until the championship game if you got that far. So guess what? So what we're going to say, we're going to say that Kansas is playing possum the whole way through. I, I I think that's what's going on. All right. So to be fair, let me ask you this, though. If we're going to skip ahead, Purdue versus TCU, who does everybody got in that game? I, I think Purdue's good enough to beat TCU. I think Purdue's good enough, but in this bracket, I picked TCU just for the hell of it. Because I, okay. I – Drama, but no, I picked Purdue. All right, so Purdue. Okay, so then let me ask you this. So Purdue plays Kansas. That game is in Detroit. Again, a home game for a Big Ten team, pretty much. You Like, you know how you said Michigan State? West Lafayette's three hours away, four hours away from Detroit. So that's not that far for Purdue fans to travel up there. Plus, Purdue's got a big alumni base in Chicago, which would just be going over there to Detroit. Not too far either. So – I mean, my my pick is, uh, would it be Purdue versus Kansas? If Kansas is even playing possum, does Zach Eady own Hunter Dickinson in the, in the in the front court pretty much? And then Purdue's guards just out outclass Kansas. So it, all right. it's basically the Maui Invitational. All over. It is. It really is. So, yeah. All right. So let me ask you this. So we've gotten the top part of that bracket. Purdue's there at the top. We've got South Carolina beating Oregon. What about Creighton versus Akron, a three versus 14 seed? I don't see a 14 beating a three seed this time. So, Well, just from the way Akron beat Kent State, Kent State was about to beat Akron if if the guy doesn't make that foul. Like, I feel sorry for that kid. Like, that's, yeah, that was bad. Like, he's going to get replayed over and over for the rest of his life, every March. Like, when March rolls around, he will be known for that moment. Mm -hmm. Somebody shining moment. Can I tell you this, too? Had he not fouled, that would have been another bubble team bounced because Kent State was the seventh seed in that conference tournament in the MAC. Yeah. So, it back. Helped. You could have had six teams cry and foul at that point, you know. Hey, Virginia is down 37 to 16. Does anybody think that Virginia can come back at this point? I mean, this is looking like a girls' basketball game at this point. I mean, honestly. So. Man, Virginia can't score. Dude, they like, are terrible. They, they are you horrible. You can't play that style and be successful. Like, you got a national title off of it. Can I ask this? What was the spread in this game? I would have put the mortgage on Colorado State in this game knowing this. I mean, honestly, they suck, man. They are terrible. Holy shit. All right, so we're going to go with Creighton, I think. Um, <laughs> George, they stay. <laughs> He's in on it, too. They stay. They, they, they are. They Stink. Out, out, out. Poor Jeff hey. Capel and Pitt got left out. Poor Indiana State got left out. <laughs> this is for you, Indianapolis NCAA committee, to put this joke in there. I mean, if you wanted to do a tournament of pre of past national champions, you know, we can have a, a game in a few years when Ty Jerome and all of them are retired from the NBA. I don't even know if that cat's still in there or not. This <laughs> is horrible. This is awful. And you oh know what? I much, I much, I much rather this right here. My eleven-year-old's team can score more than that. Laugh out loud. Yep. Saturday morning, Saturday morning, West Beard and basketball can do better than this, man. Honestly, CSU was two and a half favorite. Oh my god! I would have put the whole. I would have put ten thousand bucks on it if I had it. Honestly, I really would have. 
Oh Man, my god. Security team would have outscored these guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm. I'm my I'm, friend, I'm, my West High freshman team would have outscored you. Shit, I mean, you know it would have. I mean, okay, listen to this. Um, I think South Carolina's women's team could beat Virginia. I'm being dead serious when I say that right now. They would need no bank three pointer to do it either. Um, All right, so we got Creighton over Akron. Um, now that Colorado State has gotten rid of Virginia, do we have a Mountain West team? Moving on, or does the Texas Longhorns from the Big 12 beat Colorado State mm. in the 7-10 matchup? I like what I like what Texas do though. Yeah, Texas is good. I mean, I like, you know, I like Texas. I like Texas. Yeah, I like Texas. Okay. And finally, Tennessee versus St. Peter's. Two pair. St. Peter's can't do this. To another SEC team, can they? I hope not. But <laughs> no. I wouldn't. I, I I could never wear a Tennessee shirt here in Knoxville ever again in my own city. I could never wear if they lose to St. Peter's, man. In Charlotte, it's a four and a half hour drive for the ball fans. As many Carolina fans are there, there's going to be a lot of Tennessee fans for that that uh, that yeah. game. I don't know. I don't know too many people from Jersey that are saying they're going to North Carolina for the weekend. Like it, uh, it, it don't sound right. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to tell you this, man. Charlotte's a fun town. Charlotte's fun for the NCAA tournament. I went a few years back. It was fun. It, it's like Tennessee, bro. That's showing in Nashville. Like, how do you get pumped out in Nashville? I go back to that year in 2009 where I thought Tennessee would beat Mississippi State on that SEC championship Sunday and they lost. You know, it was 2009 or what have you. And I, I was like, how does this happen? How, how does this happen? And it happened, you know. So the, George is right. If St. Peter's wins, you guys will cry all tournament long. Yeah. I mean, it would be like terrible. It, it would be awful. Oh Dude, if they do that again, there's no way on God's green earth. Yeah, Tennessee, I hope, but who knows with the way the tournament went the other day. Yeah, I mean, that was as disappointing of a game that could have been. It was like Knox, Knox, Knoxville moved to Nashville for the SEC tournament. And by the end of the day, Kentucky and Tennessee were selling their tickets because they weren't there anymore for Saturday, Sunday. I mean, what the hell? I ain't never what seen What the hell? I never seen anything like it. The, the 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 opening day of the tournament, the quarterfinals on a Friday. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You really just told the fans back home we're not we're we're, we're not fit for postseason play. Like yeah. we're we're just good in the regular season. I'm going to tell you this. I think that Tennessee is going to come out focused. I think Connect is going to connect. And God, please, where is the milk carton for Santiago Viscovi? I mean, where on earth is Santiago? Not Carmen Vince. San Diego. Where on earth is Santiago Viscovi? Bench Santi Viscovi. Bench him. He's giving you 27 points in seven games. Bitch him. <laughs> he stinks. He stinks, man. He's he's the guy that was the dude last year. No, not the and Josiah James. What is going on? Once upon a time, you were a five-star. This is it. Where's he at? Where is Josiah James? Another guy on a milk carton missing right now. But Josiah does a little bit of everything. Viscovi does. I feel like. I feel like the seniors have something to prove. Yeah, yeah. I they think do. they have something to prove because I just – the thing is, I think we're helping them more than they know it by saying all of this right now because it's going to come back and they're going to be inspired and they're going to go out the way seniors – like, this is my thing. If you are a senior at this point and you're not – and you get bounced. Yeah. Like your legacy is not that. Be like the senior class. Be like the senior class of the Jerron Maymans. 
You know what I mean? Be, be I, remember that that. Your class. I remember that actually. So, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So I'm going to go Tennessee. Tennessee beats St. Peter's. I think the Tennessee gets it done. Now you've got Tennessee versus Texas. And the storyline that CBS is salivating is Rick Barnes going, who's the real UT? Who's the real orange? Um, future SEC matchup next year, every year from here on out. So my so many storylines. Does Rick Barnes get it done over Texas? I think Tennessee matches up well with Texas, actually. And I've got Tennessee going to that Sweet 16 game. The thing, I like Creighton over South Carolina. George likes South Carolina over Creighton. Um, Shane, what do you got? Do you think it's going to be an all SEC sweet 16? I mean, that's kind of crappy that South Carolina got put there to play Tennessee in the sweet 16. I think conference matchups should not happen at least until the elite eight. Now, if you've got nine or 10 bids, that's a different story. You're going to have somebody there, but it's like, damn, Tennessee would have to play South Carolina again in the sweet 16 in Detroit. I mean, that would be, you know why here's yeah. why they do this. Tennessee beat South Carolina to win the regular season outright title. Yeah. In South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see South Carolina again, that will have mean Tennessee being the two seed, South Carolina being the six seed. And then if South Carolina wins, that's one of those that that's good for the that's good for the conference. It is. Yeah, but because Lamont Paris, what he's done over in South Carolina, yeah, yeah, like and South Carolina, if you remember, they got to the final four under Frank Martin on that improbable 2017 run, knock off Duke, um, kept on winning and gave, gave uh, North Carolina everything they wanted in that game before ultimately, uh, uh, North Carolina ended up winning, but uh, um. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Larry Frank joined the show. Tar Heels win it all. Don't even play the rest of the tournament. That's the Utah guy, Larry Frank, uh, that uh, uh, does the show with uh, with George and Devin, those guys. Shout out to you, Larry. Um, yeah, you, ain't, you if you watched from before, man, we, uh, we got Arizona beating uh, North Carolina in Los Angeles, and we got Caleb Love hitting the three-point shot that does it. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, that game could go – Either way, so you got to go back and, and rewind and watch our pick there. So, yeah. Oh my God, Virginia is now up to 25 points, but they're down by 19 with 11 to go. They stink. So, <laughs> they stink. All right, so let me ask you this. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go with South Carolina over Creighton. We're gonna go with that. Uh, so we're gonna go with with the I Gamecocks, I and then. I like I, my Paris, and I feel like I feel like the FCC. I feel like South Carolina played a tougher schedule than Creighton. Yeah, I do too. I do too. So then, let me ask you this: Tennessee versus South Carolina. Um, George has Tennessee beating South Carolina. I've got Tennessee beating South Carolina. Um, so we'll go with Tennessee playing new in a rematch from the game earlier this year. And that was in Maui when that game happened, right? Was that the bully ball game where, where I mean, they just, I mean. So then let me ask you this. Does Tennessee get their revenge, denies Matt Painter a Final Four, and Tennessee gets to their first Final Four ever? Dodson Connect scores 40. In that game. Okay. 40. And Zach Eady, and Zach Eady's running out of breath up and down the court. So Tennessee, we've got going to the Final Four. Um so the home Dog, pick Dog is up. Connect gets player of the year in this game. Okay. All right. George has Purdue winning. I, I'll go with Tennessee just because this is the Rebels with the cause bracket, and we've got three Tennessee people. So, I, and you know what? I'll tell you this. Do I rip the bracket up if they lose on Thursday or Saturday at this point? I mean, because I, I, this is as far as I have them going. I think whoever comes out of the South – ultimately beats Tennessee. I'd love to see them in the national championship game, but I just think that this is as far as I've got Tennessee going in the bracket because the team out of the South, who I have, has shown to have beaten Tennessee before. So that's the thing. So, I mean, so let's let's get to that. Let's get to the South region. 
Houston and Longwood. Do we all agree Houston's going to win that game? Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. We talked about it earlier. Nebraska versus Texas A&M. I've got A&M, even though Nebraska does have some scores. But I like the SEC in this one. I, I think the SEC is a better conference than the Big Ten. Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor. I, right. I'm going with I'm going with star power. Okay. Give me Wade Taylor. Well, and give me Buzz Williams with his uh with his with his mafia suit. So yeah. All right. Then let me ask you this. Um Wisconsin versus James Madison. I've got the Dukes upsetting Wisconsin. Everybody's jumping up and down about Wisconsin. I think JMU could be that Cinderella that gets to the Sweet 16 at least, honestly. Uh, uh, yes, I think James Madison. Yeah, I like James Madison. Hell, I think James Madison could beat Duke. Uh, dude, Vermont could beat Duke. Are you kidding me? That's another team that stinks. They are so <laughs> soft. They, they, th That is one of the softest teams I've seen all year. And, and, and on top of it, on top of it, they were preseason number two. So you have one, two, and five that were all disappointments, and they were in the Champions Classic. Mm. What Champions Classic, man? <laughs> Laurels of the past or whatever there. I mean, Vermont could beat Duke technically, but I think Duke beats Vermont because Vermont don't have anybody that can handle Kyle Filipowski. That's the thing. So, um, But I could see JMU running Duke off the court, especially if Duke's not hitting three-pointers. So, live by the three, die by the three, honestly. So, and here's the other thing, too. I got Texas Tech beating NC State. As nice of a little run as that was last week for NC State, I think Texas Tech's defense is just going to bother them like crazy, honestly. I really do. So, yeah. So, so I've got Texas Tech. Let's see here. Uh, Kentucky versus Oakland. Do we have Kentucky losing in the first round, or do we got uh, Oakland, uh, or, or do we got Kentucky uh, rolling on with the, fre the those fabulous freshmen of theirs? Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard. Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard. Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard is playing himself into being a lottery pick right now. Reed Reed Shepard. Um, I, I like Kentucky. I like Kentucky all day. I love the North Carolina fan throwing the screw Duke. Uh, go Vermont. Go Catamounts. Uh, Kentucky wins. Kentucky. I like that. That's very true. So, yeah. All right. So, we got Kentucky. All right. Okay. Uh, Florida versus the Colorado Boise State winner. That leg injury to that center for Florida was nasty, man. I saw that yeah. live and I was like, oh my God, I couldn't even, I couldn't even rewind it. And then like there was blood on his calf. I mean, it was a true compound fracture. They had to do emergency surgery that night at Vanderbilt. Thank God they were at Vanderbilt Hospital of all places. So yeah. Yeah. I, I like Florida though, man. I, I they're still good. I mean, you know, credit to them that they even played as hard as they did against Auburn because to lose your big man like that three minutes into the game or something, I mean, that would take the wind out of anybody's sales. Anybody's sales. So, you know, yeah. but I like Florida. And then Marquette versus Western Kentucky. You know, the Western Kentucky has the stupidest mascot of all time. It's like, what is that? Hilltopper. But what is that? Is that a blob? Is that the blob from the movie The Blob? Is that Pat from oh. Saturday Night Live? You don't know what it is? It's Pat. I mean, what is that? What is Honestly. Does anybody know what a, a hilltopper is? I don't know, but it looks like a turd. It looks like Mr. Hankey like, got fat from South Park and walks around and now turned red or something like that. Honestly, that's what it looks like. Mr. Hankey walking around, honestly. So, yeah. We got the Swamp Lizards winning Florida. I, I think Marquette, and apparently Marquette has a, had a kid that can shoot the lights out. He's a southpaw. His name escapes me, but he's been out, and that's why they haven't been as hot as of late. But he's supposed to be back, ready to go for the tournament, and a lot of people have Marquette going to the at least the Sweet 16 before ultimately losing Kentucky, and that's what I have. I have Kentucky beating Marquette to at least get to the Elite Eight. Dillingham and crew, like you said, that's what I've got. I've got Kentucky beating Texas Tech. 
and I've got um, Marquette beating Florida. So I'm, I don't know what you I got. Like a, I like a Florida Kentucky uh, matchup, though. A great ending to a hot date equals a hilltop. <laughs> We got some rebels with a cause after dark stuff now. So shoot. Yeah. Oh my God. So, all right. So here we go. So um, yeah, I agree with George on this one. If anybody disagrees, let me know. So we agree that JMU will, will bounce Duke. Um, I think Houston's good enough to beat Texas A&M. I do. I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Who's that now? Houston and Texas A&M. I think Houston's good enough to beat Texas A&M. But Houston's good enough to beat Texas A&M. But Texas A&M matches up with Houston. And Houston's big man's out. Houston doesn't have – that's what I'm saying. If Henry Coleman and Houston's guard – or and Texas A&M's guards crash the boards, it could be a long night. It could be another Iowa State thing. But you Houston. know what team I wish would have – um. <laughs> I wish Mississippi State would have been in that South bracket. Of, yeah. Oh man, man, you want to talk about? Yeah, I would have loved to see do, that. Do you want to know why they didn't do that? Because that would have virtually been a home game in Memphis for Mississippi State against Houston. So you'd not really be rewarding the one seed and giving a geographical location advantage to Mississippi State because Starkville, I think, is three hours away from Memphis maybe, while Houston is, you know, a couple states away. But, again, you know, I mean, yeah. So um, <clears throat> so, so what do you think, two pair? We'll go with Houston for the Rebels with the Cause bracket or what have you. Absolutely. And then Houston versus JMU. Um, I guess Houston would beat JMU at that point. I think that the Houston defense would be a little too much for JMU at this point. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think Houston's backcourt, which she – I mean, shit. He just plays it just a well tempo and – just the way they get after it, man. Um, I like I like LJ uh, Cryer as well, um, but Jamal Shed, <laughs> he can just lock up guys, man, and, and great distributor of the ball, great facilitator. But <laughs> you know their last few games, that that all uh, that Iowa State game just left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, though. Yeah. It just did, like I mean, nobody... you know, two pair. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm not saying Longwood could beat Houston, but how do you recover from that game in six days? Well, what 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 trips me out with Houston is being the team to score 41 points and being the first team to do that, losing since 1982. It is a bad sign, like because I start replaying all the five slamma jamma collapses, you know the UNC collapse, the NC State collapse. Mm -hmm. It is the history of Houston collapsing. You know they've never been able to seal the deal. No, and Miami bounced them last year by by fifteen points. I mean that wasn't even close. So, I mean. I think Houston's good enough to get to the Elite Eight. They are. But I think that Kentucky is good enough to beat them in Dallas the way Iowa State did, if, especially if Dillingham and crew get hot from three. I mean, Kentucky is, with the exception of what happened against Texas A&M, Kentucky's got to defend. That's the thing. That's it. If Kentucky plays defense. They are – a they're going to be a tough out. I, I, I mean, if they play defense, they can score. They're in the championship game. I, I hate to say that because that means they would be beating Tennessee in this bracket. So, but I've got Kentucky. I'm going to put Kentucky in there, and Kentucky will play Tennessee. Let's roll through the East because I know we're getting late and it's starting to run short on time. But let's run through the East real quick. Um, UConn versus Stetson. UConn. UConn, yeah, we'll 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 get that out of the way. Ain't even got to talk about it. The, yeah, UConn. we don't. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this one. This is again the eight nine, the stink game. 
Florida Atlantic versus Northwestern. I just like Northwestern in this game. I don't know why. I think Florida Atlantic. I like Northwestern. I picked FAU in in, in in one of these brackets, but no, I take I take Northwestern. I like Chris Collins. I like what I like what he's built there. You know, shout out to Northwestern. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is their second or their their second national uh, their tournament, their second tournament they're a part of, and it's all under Chris Collins, Doug Collins' son. That's that's unbelievable there. So yeah. Um, San Diego State versus UAB. A lot of people have kind of been thinking about UAB, but I don't think UAB played anybody tough. Um, they beat Temple. Temple wasn't very good this year. Um, they, I like San Diego State. They beat a good South Florida team. They did. They did beat a good South Florida team. So, But I like San Diego State in that one. Um, let me ask you this. Um, I think Auburn – Beats Yale. If anybody has a problem with that, let me know. Very rarely does a an Ivy League school win, with the exception of what happened last year. Again, that was against Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, so Auburn. What about BYU versus Duquesne? The Duquesne Dukes. Uh, that's that six eleven matchup down there. I like BYU personally, but I like yeah. BYU because of Mark Pope. But you know that this. The Duquesne team is coached by uh, LeBron's former high school coach at St. Vincent St. Mary. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So this one's kind of – that's I, I be feeling like a lot of destiny could be rolling with that because he's set to retire um, after this tournament. I like this. Bet on the Mormons. <laughs> they got nothing else. I mean, come on. So Steve Sarkeesian. So – um, you know, no, you know BYU can't play on Sundays. That's right. That's right. So that's why that game was on Saturday. Or, or well, sorry, it would be Thursday. Then they play Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. So, okay, that makes sense. So, all right, Illinois versus Moorhead State. As much as I like Moorhead, um, I've got to go with Illinois uh, to win that game, honestly. You know, so. as much as I like Moorhead, because that was a school I was going to go to just because of the name of the school, Moorhead State, um, I'm still going to say. Can I just say this? Can, can I just be real? But I really wanted to go to Moorhead State when I was in, in school. I thought they had a great basketball sports type program. L listen, Shane, Shane will echo me on this. But realistically, there should be more head going on because the world would be a lot happier place. No war, no fighting, more head in love. Shane McGee, we all love more head. Absolutely. But in this case, in this case, Illinois, the Illini, who I'm surprised they haven't been made to change their mascot name with the Indian and all that and so forth. But I've got the fighting Illini winning that one and so forth for sure. Uh, the fighting Illini. Uh, looked incredible in the video. <laughs> Larry Frank, I just... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Rebels, Rebels with a cause after dark, ladies and gentlemen. Rebels with a cause after dark, I'm telling you. So, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Washington State against Drake. Okay, I got a funny quick story because I know we're running short on time. Drake last year had a guy that looked like Screech's love child. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Dustin Diamond. And he was talking so much smack, and Miami came back and beat them. So I actually took a picture of Screech on the post, and I go, you ain't dancing and laughing now. Go Miami or whatever and so forth. But anyway, I think he's still on that Drake team. And I've got Drake upsetting the uh, the, the Cougars, one less Pac-12 team in the, in, the, in the dance, unfortunately. So what do you got? Washington State. Washington State. No way does the Pac-12 go down like this. All right, uh, what does everybody else have? Um, does it? I got, I got somebody. I don't like Drake because I think of the rapper Go Cook. <laughs> Old Jimmy it. Graham in his wheelchair. So shoot. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Um, all right. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with Drake. We have more Drake than uh, than Washington State. Iowa State versus South Dakota State. I like Iowa State, man. I, I don't. I, they they did not. I thought that the overall number one seed was supposed to be rewarded with the weakest number two. 
I don't think Iowa State's the weakest number two, man. I, I that's ridiculous right there that Connecticut got placed with them. Uh, if if chalk holds and so forth, so yeah. But um, I got I, we got Iowa State for Shane. Cyclones for Larry. I think George Diaz even has Iowa State getting to at least the Sweet 16. So I'm going to put Iowa State. I think we all agree Illinois beats BYU. Um, between Auburn and San Diego State, what does everybody got? I've got Auburn winning that <laughs> game. So um, I like Auburn because Auburn got a little bit more dynamics in San Diego State. It's like Auburn – Auburn can't play San Diego's pace. If Auburn plays San Diego's pace, San Diego State will upset Auburn. Yeah. And Auburn, and here's the thing. San Diego State, they've returned a lot of that team from last year. So they they it wouldn't be improbable to set up a rematch with UConn. And I, I, I can't remember the last time that happened that the national championship game from the year before got played in like a sweet 16 the following year. That's, I mean, there's been matchups later on down the line in years, but, the, but to have that potential for the next year, that'd be pretty cool storyline. I just think Auburn's playing some great basketball right now. And between UConn and Auburn, Auburn has the horses to do it, but I, I just think UConn um, is on a mission right now. Not to mention that game would be played in Boston, which would virtually be a home game for UConn. Honestly, the Connecticut would empty the entire state to go to the Boston Garden. So I've got UConn winning that one. And then Illinois, Iowa State. I've been going back and forth on this one. I like Iowa State. Maybe I'm just wrong, but again, I'm valuing the Big 12 over the Big 10. And I could get my ass handed to me by the end of Friday, depending on which conference is superior by the end of those two days. But what do you guys think? Iowa State or Illinois in that Sweet 16 game for the right to play the defending champs? I feel like Iowa State has the best team, but the best player plays for Illinois. Oh, God, yes. He's badass, man. He he owned that Big Ten tournament. He is badass. And in the NCAA tournament, for me, I'm going to pick – did I pick – yeah, I picked Illinois over uh, – Okay. I, was I think George – I think George picked Illinois too. Let me go yeah. back up to his. Yeah. Um, UConn beats Auburn and Illinois beats Iowa State. Okay. So, for the sake of this, um, I'll go with Illinois. All right. So, then we've got Illinois versus UConn in Boston um, Saturday UConn. afternoon in UConn. the Elite Eight. Who do we got? UConn. You con. I got you con as well. Yeah, I got you con because Bobby Hurley's gonna give that speech saying, Do you think that they are better than us? Like that they have a certain swagger. I feel like UConn is going to win the national title. Dude, can I just say this? Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> I wanted to say something at the beginning of the show, but I didn't want to offend anybody, but I guess I'm going to do it anyway. This could potentially be the UConn Invitational Tournament with UConn and 69 other teams. Um, and truth be told, we're not even talking about women's basketball like we used to with Gino Ariema. It was the UConn Invitational, and all those nice little teams jumped up and down, had their, you know, and UConn won it every damn year. Whether it was Brianna Stewart, that Tina Charles, all of them. They won it every Maya damn Moore. year. Maya Moore, uh, Elena Del Don, um, you know, I mean, all, the all, of fails. all of them. Rebecca Lobo, uh, damn Sue Bird. I mean, Daddy, all of them. All of them. Sue Bird. Yeah, Diana Taurasi. Diana Taurasi, all of them. <laughs> they won it every damn year, it felt like. So, um, all right, so then here's the deal. So we've got UConn. Now, this is the Rebels for a Cause bracket, Larry. You could have bought, you could have been in earlier, and 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 because two pairs of big North Carolina fan, too. You guys could have outvoted the people that picked Arizona, and we could have North Carolina in this bracket, but here's the deal. I picked North Carolina because, <laughs> hey, I promise, I'm here for the drama. Yeah. If, if Caleb Love goes one for 15 against, Arizona, against North Carolina, 
Oh, you don't understand how happy Listen. I will be. I, oh, my God. Let me tell you what I do to my man. Oh, my Oh, that would be great Here, drama. Here's my question. That would be phenomenal drama. Listen, not to bring up a sore a sore memory for North Carolina fans, but do you remember when Randolph Childress like shook? Uh, I don't know who he was going up Jeff against. McGinnis. North, yeah, McGinnis, and he kind of like waved to him and said, "Wait, come back, come back," and then he shoots the three. What if R.J. Davis does that to Caleb Love in that game? Like, just, just like, just like, wait, hey, no, come here, Caleb, or whatever, and just buries a three right in his face. And R.J. Davis has a Randolph Childress game like that against Caleb Love or what have you. So, yeah. I would love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. In this bracket, we've got UConn versus Arizona. I think UConn would be too much for Arizona. Could North Carolina beat UConn? I think North Carolina is probably the team built to beat Connecticut. Yeah, I agree with that. But you for this matchup, built to beat UConn. Yes, yes, they have the thighs to match Klingham inside, and they've got the guard play with Kadu and R.J. Davis. And if Cormac Ryan is as hot as on fire as he was against Duke, Duke, you know, they would they would beat ultimately Connecticut. And here's the thing, that game is in Phoenix. So you I mean, here's the thing. If Arizona gets to the final four, that's a home game for them. I mean, Tucson's only an hour and a half away from Phoenix. So does that help Arizona or is Connecticut just too much no matter where that game is played against Arizona? So yeah. But how, how cool would it be if Arizona won in Phoenix and with the last Pac-12? And then what is it? Is it is it the 27-year anniversary when Bibby and Miles Simon won it in 97? That would be it would be 27 years since that would they, be that would be crazy. Simon yeah. says championship, one of the best calls ever by Jim Nance. So yeah. <laughs> hey, what about that real quick? First tournament, Jim Nance is not calling. It's now Ian Eagle and Bill Rafferty and Grant Hill being the main guys calling it with Tracy Wolfson on the sideline. No Jim Nance. First tournament in 30 something years. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, and I like I, Ian. I mean, Ian does a good job, but Jim Nance, oh my God, the calls he's made when a team wins the championship. So, yeah. Jim, Jim Nance is one of the greatest to ever do it. All right. So then let me ask you this. So in our bracket, we've got UConn, Arizona, Kentucky versus Tennessee. So do we have a UConn versus Kentucky matchup? Do we have a UConn versus Tennessee matchup in the championship that's happened many times in women's basketball? That'd be hilarious if Connecticut and Tennessee played men's for a national championship after all those years of Pat and Gino going at it or whatever. Hey, what if they won it for Pat? That would be something. And gave the, the biggest F you to Gino Ariema from Knoxville or whatever like that. So have Tyler Summit present him with a trophy or something like that. So, yeah. Um, listen, <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I agree with George. George. George said this. UConn is your national champion. The winner of UConn versus Arizona is your national champion. I agree with this. Whoever comes out of Arizona, North Carolina, and Connecticut, those three teams – I truly believe will be your national champion because I think that side is tougher from top to bottom than anybody on the right side, Kentucky, Tennessee, Purdue, Houston, whomever. I just think that that's what happens. So I will go with UConn and um, Kentucky versus Tennessee. I know that we've got, I know that we've got a lot of Tennessee people here, but if Kentucky and Tennessee played in the final four, who does everybody have? I know George has Purdue beating Kentucky, but if Kentucky played Tennessee in Phoenix on Saturday night in a couple of weeks, who do you have ultimately winning that game? A senior lad in Tennessee or do the fabulous freshman from Kentucky try to take on UConn? So mm. hey, you Larry, know what? Larry Frank's got Tennessee. George goes with Tennessee. So – all right, so we're going to go with Tennessee against Connecticut in this bracket. And then it seems like everybody agrees as nice of a run it would be for Tennessee to get to that championship game. And stranger things have happened. I just think if UConn gets there after beating a Carolina or an, or an Arizona, 
I think UConn cuts down the nets and goes back to back, baby. That's the that's been the theme, man. West Rebels went back to back. Fulton and Alcoa back to back. The Chiefs went back to back. I think Connecticut goes back to back. What's the score? How many points? Because I have to put how many points goes in there and so forth that the two teams combine for. What it, it, are we calling this the year of the back to backs? We we are calling this the year of the back to back, and then West will start the three peat starting in the fall. In 5A. So, because truth be told, I mean, we've been champs for 473 days and counting. So, we are the Roman Reigns of 5A football in Tennessee. So, that's what it is. So, um, George says 162. Anybody else got a different number? 162 sound good between the two teams? Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll go with 162 then. So, okay. All right. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Rebels with the cause bracket. This is where this is what it's going to be. So I will enter this tomorrow on the ESPN tournament challenge. Call it the Rebels with the cause bracket. And if we should win, everybody that participated in this, we will all be going to the final four next year. And I believe Vegas is hosting the Final Four next year. That is going to be damn fun if that happens, by the We're way. We're in Vegas. Count me in. Count Vegas. Me in. We're going to be in Count Vegas. me in. Count me in for Vegas in the Final Four next year. So if we win this bracket. So, guys, I know it's been a longer than usual show. Thank you for everybody that is tuned in, everybody that's participated. We've had so many laughs tonight, so much in such a show. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so much crammed in there. I'll be in Vegas in July, my man, honestly. So, um, Larry Frank, wait a minute. I, I got to get this in here. If North Carolina loses, I riot, man. I'll tell you this. They've got a path. Um, it's just, it's, it's up to them to kind of get it done to be on. Be on. Shane McGee goes, all of us in Vegas would be interesting. It'd be the damn hangover, dude. Are you kidding me? We may not even make it to whatever that stadium is called there that the Raiders play in where the, where the, where the games would happen. So it'd be amazing. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, but that's all I got guys. I know that it's been a late night and uh, thank you for tuning in. And for those that watch it recorded, Definitely throw your stuff in there as well, your opinions, whether you agree or not agree. But this is the bracket that I am entering for us. And those that participated, we will make sure we're in Vegas next year for the final four if we win this whole thing, picking this together. So it'd be hilarious if we – does Does Warren Buffett still do that perfect bracket billion dollars he gives away or something like that? Because we could split that five ways and, and be great. So that'd be awesome. So. Oh, and that, man. I'd take that. So, Thank you. Oh, here we go. If we go to Vegas, who gets more head from a hilltopper? <laughs> the answer to that question will be answered on April 5th of next year. So we will answer. That one will be tabled till next year, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> Rebels with a cause after dark. You got to love it. So real quick, just so I'm just clear, we put this at the beginning of the show. I'm going to put this at the end of the show just in case I piss off anybody because you know this face. It pisses off everybody. I am the Eric Bischoff of Rebel West High Football. Oh, I, really am, so I really am. So I might even come out to that uh, for every game this year. I'm bad and I'm badder than ever. <laughs> Uh, hey guys listen i love y'all y'all are so great to support this show if you haven't liked it already please hit like and hit subscribe um gives us that algorithm and gets it out there um you know we're just two guys just entertaining trying to use that broadcasting degree and uh, having a lot of fun talking about high school sports and talking about the greatest time of year this march madness happy early birthday to two pair tate happy early birthday to mrs two pair tate you know, honestly, you guys got, I hope, a great weekend plan and uh, enjoy it, brother. Honestly, the fact that we've lost so many that didn't even get to this age of 40 and we both have made yeah. it. Honestly, we both have. So, Definitely, man. Who would have thought? So, yeah. Uh, close us out, brother. Next week's going to be your birthday bash show. And, of course, we can go through our picks and, and re-pick a bracket or what have you. Maybe that second chance bracket if it's so horrible or whatever. But I'm expecting a great weekend of games. But I want you to close us out. And happy birthday and all the love to you and everybody that supports the Rebels with a Cause show. Hey, man, y'all know what it is, man. Rebels with a Cause with the Italian Stallion and Tupac Tate. 
little love, peace, and chicken grease, and they don't step on them shoes, throw your dubs up. It's always about the W's. Go Rebels. Love you guys. Enjoy March Madness, baby. Once a year, we go.